Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Just vibes and just vibes in here. Here, here, here. Just vibes and right here. A little Q and A right here. Ross Seymour, I and I, just vibes and you know, I sparring P, you know, and the just just vibes in category right here. We just vibes and so we're gonna touch on Luke. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. As I mentioned, this is one of my personal favorite verses here in the bible so grab your pen paper sacred scripture b-i-b-l-e you know bring a willing and attentive mind because what's the price of truth pay attention so luke chapter 19 verse 27 right we're going to reason on this particular verse right here one of i and i favorite verses and it reads like this but those those mine enemies right red letter red letter so this is is yeshua this is aka jesus christ who other others call Jesus but we say Yeshua right he's saying right here but those enemies those mine enemies but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them bring hither bring here and slay them before me one of my favorite verses all time when I saw this verse first I just saw the number and 1927 and I was like that's I know that number, you know what I mean? That was a good year, but I know that number there, Luke 19, 27. And then when I went to the verse and looked at it, right? Looked at this verse, here's the verse right here on the screen for ones and ones, the audience here. This is Ras Iadonis Safari. But here on the Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews, and when dealing with this context from this perspective, you can call me by my Hebrew name, Yadon, Yadon. If you wanna see it in the KJV, King James Version, do your own study on it. Um, good name is rather to be chosen. There's Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter, chapter three, verse seven, just to give a background, because I like to use the, um, kind of the handle Yadin Ben Kushi, Ben Kushi. And if you have seen the video on Kush, if you know what Kush means from a Hebrew perspective, both now and then, you know, we hold it proudly. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, or children of Yisrael? Are you not as the B'nai Kushim? So that's like sons of the Kushim, B'nai Yisrael, sons of Israel. So this is Yadon Ben Kushi. Right. Some might interpret it in, in the racism, ism, schism as son of the N-word, but be it be it as it be. But if you want to see it in the KJV, Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 7. I'm just going to mention that right here just quickly here. Um, this is our take two on this right here. It was recording for a moment. And apologies, bro, because you were saying something. We're trying to set up the context of how this particular verse you know, came before I and I, and why we're bringing this to you all right here. Have you read this verse? It's on the screen, Luke chapter 19, verse 27. So, setting it up, the brother man sent me this, and you know, it was sent me the question that was posted, I think, on the Facebook. Um, Rossi, uh, uh, it, it was actually posted. This is Rossi, more by the way. Um, on this vibes, in, it was actually posted by one of my cousins on our family WhatsApp page. And because um, we call him Julie Myron, um, I just reasoned with him a while ago, and I had a point of view, but I didn't bring, you know, I didn't, like presented a while to hold off on that until we got further clarification. I know this is one of the scriptures that like, seems to stump, you know, like you said, stump a lot of people. And also, you know, put on the family page for a couple of days now, and it seems like, you know, ones and ones are doing their research and, <laughs> and you know, and digging into, you know, the, you know, the scriptures before anybody put a word song out, you know, so. Uh oh. You put out a word song to make sure that you, the word song is, you know, like it's correct, you know, like in the teachings of one on one, you know, so right now we try, you know, that we're going to break this down right now for ones and ones and we're going to get into it right now, so, yarding. Yeah, Yes, yes, yes. Okay, as as some of my homies say, some of the OGs say. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Let's get into this right here. Yeah, and this verse gets me excited, man, because it's the reality, you know. Is she? Is she? Is she? Yes, is she? Yeah, and them hard could say is she okay? Could say yes. It's an affirmation, like agree, like agree. Basically, to say the vibes of it, the spirit of the word. Is she? Is she? Is she? Now, yeah, is she? No, I enjoyed the prep, but I learned that just today. Okay, so it's something I'm looking for, right? Well, uh, humble, <laughs> humble, humble. Don't you grumble? <laughs> but now, the ishi is different than ishi because it's so it's so mystic. I was just reasoning with my sisters, um, Hilap uh, Malcha Macheda, 
um, Queen Makeda over in the state over in Yisrael. Um, she's helping I and I with like the modern Hebrew as well. She's very fluent and you know, sing some beautiful reggae, you know, Hebrew reggae. Um, Queen Makeda. She's the one that we share like the clean hands, the clean hands tune, a couple other tunes as well. Um, more on that, but I sent her a message. And also the hail of her king man, um, Melchizedek. He wrote this book. Many of you all might have read it from back in the days. When I say back in the days, maybe 20 to 30 years ago. Um, I think the secrets of Melchizedek, Malachi Edek, you know, hail him up as well. So in a communication to, to her, I had used the term in the Hebrew, um, Balech, Balech, right? Balech, like Baal, Baal. You know, you hear people talk about Baal, like Baal or Baal. But in Hebrew, Baal, it means like husband. It's one of the terms for husband, you know, Baal, right? And there's a verse in um, Hosea or Hosea, Hosea in the Bible where it speaks about, let me just bring up the verse right here. Just on the Ishi point, since you brought up Ishi, you know how we do, we just, what we, what we call this right here? Just just vibes. In. Just vibes. And so we just vibes. And so we just found the vibes. We're going to get we're going to get into that verse right there. We'll let the people like, you know, um, do a little more, <laughs> do a little more research because Ishi is in the Bible, too. Ishi is in the Bible, but it's a different Ishi. In the Mark, we say I, I, she, I, she. In the Hebrew, we say Ishi, Ishi. Now, Ishi, it's the verse here, Hosea 2, 16, it says, And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, saith Yahweh, that thou shall call me Ishi, and shall call me no more Baali, 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 Baali. Now, Baali in the Hebrew, right, is Baali means my Lord, or like my owner, my master. Among some of the other ites that spoke a similar language, you know how we have patois and different ones, even in different hoods here in America, East Coast, West Coast, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, you know, in different areas. We're all speaking English, even in the Caribbean. We're all speaking English and, you know, a form of this English, right? But we speak it differently, you know what I'm saying? In different regions. And some words that we use in common, we might have a different meaning for it. You know what I mean? Like when you mentioned your cut. I, I don't know whether you meant like over here in this North country, America, like we would say cuz, you know, cuz could mean a relative or cuz could mean like a close, you know, relation, you know, like like a homie in that sense. So anyway, among some of the other ites, this is actually on the whole Baal, one to deal with the whole Baal and Baal thing, because when we use it, sometimes people might, you know, only look at it in the King James sense where it's translated, transliterated from the Hebrew into the English. So it's a Hebrew term, but you see the term still there in the Hebrew. It's not interpreted into the English. So there's this whole idol that the other peoples used to worship, Baal of the Philistines. It was their high God. But in the language, it basically means husband. So basically among the Philistines and others, the Canaanites who worship Baal, they worshiped God in the sense of the husband. They worship the husband idea. Like some people worship the goddess or some people worship the mother idea. Some people worship the son idea. Some people worship the brother, the brother-in-law idea. Some people worship the uncle idea. You know what I'm saying? I'm just breaking it down, keeping it, you know, straight 100 because a lot of other people spook it out for you, but really it's, it's psychological concepts, how we view certain things. So this word basically means my master and it's a symbolical name of Jehovah in the scripture because he is really the husband. So in some verses in the Bible where it talks about um, Yahweh, it says that like, like um, okay, speak to, speak to your mother. I'm not her husband. There's, in the prophet, right? So the prophet is speaking to Israel in the sense of Israel is a wife and Jehovah, the most high, right, is her husband but she'd been unfaithful. You know what I'm saying? And to her husband. And you'll find that in the, in, you know, in the scripts. So is Israel, she, in this context, right, he is speaking to us, you know, in our soul aspect. And in a sense, also, he is not speaking to the woman in the woman's sense only. He's speaking to the men. And he's saying to the men that just like 
you don't want your woman to be unfaithful and to sleep around and to go behind your back and whatever you give her, she's giving some man to have sex with her. You know what I mean? Like, like what kind of weirdo kind of behavior is this? Not only is she cheating on you, but she's taking the things that you give to her to make her life better and she's giving to the next man. So the next, she's paying off a man to have, have sexual relationships with her. Now people say, why are you going there, Yada? Because that's exactly what the prophet is saying. That's what's in the scripture concerning Israel. So what he's saying, the men, notice a lot of Israelites would take those verses and then point it at the woman and say, see you woman, you're not faithful to your man because of Babylon. Well, that might be true, so forth and so on. But what John is basically doing, he is, can I say this like, yeah, we can say this. He is bitching the, the Hebrew Israelites and the sons of Israel. He's bitching us. He's basically saying that y'all are just like an unfaithful woman. But he's not speaking to the woman, woman, you know what I'm saying? To like our wives and our daughters. He's speaking to us as the man them. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like when you say to a man, you know, we say to a man, we call a man bitch. You know what I'm saying? Or we call him the, the you know, the B-I-T-C-H word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> with, so with, like when you say like um, things of a woman in travail. He wasn't really speaking about the woman. He was telling about the things of her, but he wasn't even referring to her basically. You know, what, what are we going to go through as a people? Ah, uh, yes, yes. So if anybody ever seen or heard a mother going through those birthing pains, John is saying that we all as a people are going to be going through this birthing pain. <laughs> so on the issue right there, the, the issue here is not the same issue, but this is the Ishi. So we have Ishi in Amharic and Ishi. Ish is man, as, you, as ones can see on the screen. Ish is man. Right? Ish is man. Isha. Isha is woman. So here, what Jah is basically saying in this verse in Hosea 2 and 16, no longer will you call me my husband, but we will call him my man. So even with the personal relationship, check this out. Which one do you prefer, my brother? I, I, and, and, and this is not no judgment. This is I'm just curious whether the I vibes like I, I vibes on this right here. For your wife to call you my man or my husband. Which one feels a little bit closer? <laughs> husband feels a little closer, but, but my man. You, you know what I'm saying? Remember, they lived at a time when, when it was about my man or my husband. My husband has a sense of like, kind of like ownership, if you know what I'm saying. Because see, in the Hebrew, Baal, Baal as a part of Hebrew, and it's also in Amharic too. We say Balinjera. Balinjera is to say neighbor. But injera is bread. Injera. You know, like the bread you see the Ethiopian traditionally eating the flat bread. And if you ever see some of the traditional um, um, culture of the highlands, the Israelites of Ethiopia, they eat on a circular table. You know the circular table? Yeah. There's that circular. I, just so you know, I answered that question with my soul. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> So they said the soul is feminine, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The soul is feminine. It's... Okay, so I answered that question with my soul. Mm, mm. <laughs> so yeah, so the bale, bale and jera is mean one who has bread, one who has in jera. So if you ever see Ethiopians eat the bread, they usually eat on one broad piece of um, bread, a circular bread, and then yes. they have the food on there, and it's like it's very intimate. You know, like for me and you sitting down and eating on a circular thing, that means that we might be picking into the same food, like the same stew or this or that, but we're picking up with our own individual injera off of that big piece of injera. So the bala injera in the Amharic means neighbor, but literally, literally in the etymology, it means my bread companion or one who owns bread, one who in a sense I share bread with. So the bala sense, the baal sense is owner, is my owner. So when a lot of people be burning out Baal, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh is Baal to Yisrael in the sense that he is the husband truly. He is the owner. But the problem is that Israel has gone after Baalim, Baalim, Baalim are husbands. You know, other ones to be husbands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's going to say that, well, you know what? We're going to change up this relationship. No more are you going to call me my husband because you already broke that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You had other ba ba Balaam, Balaam. You know, you had other Balaam. 
but now you'll call me my man. So that was just a little kind of a segue right there, a little segue on that, because I thought it was interesting that you mentioned the issue that we studied today. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, for the Federation, Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, we had our Amharic, you know, little Amharic segment in our general business meeting, you know, on this day and this time. But here, 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 to this verse right here, that was a little extra, brothers and sisters, but on this particular verse concerning Luke chapter 19. Now, it's interesting because, um, and hail up to the Jehovah Witness. And, and let me say this for the record because one might find old audio where I might have been reproving, you know, the Jehovah Witness on certain doctrines that they held to, like against the Trinity or whatever else like that. And, I, and then I might call them Jehovah Wickedness. You know what I mean? Because it does say that, that Jehovah, he create evil. I didn't pause on that right there because some people may not know their Bible very well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they may have only been given one of those tracts. You know how they hand out those tracts in the street? And they give you those, those Christian tracts that say a lot of nice things and a lot of true things too. But the, but a lot of people take that. That's what the faith is about. They don't really get time to like study and come across a verse like this. But those... Uh, when but, it comes to the evil part, what they will basically tell you is uh, that... Uh, the absence of the Mosai, the absence of good, leaves you with evil. So it's not really a creation of evil as they would look at it. They would more look at it as the absence of good, you know, leaves you with evil. Mm. Well, there's a verse in the Bible, another favorite verse, where it says that evil shall slay the wicked. And so I take these two verses, the verse where Jehovah says, he says, he create evil. And then the other verse in the Psalms where it says that evil shall slay the wicked. So therefore, it teaches me that the Almighty created evil to keep the wicked in check since he gave man a measure of willpower. Since, since human beings have a measure of will or so-called free will, but I call it will, then therefore that means they can do good, right? Or they can do opposite. So to restrain, to restrain the badness or, you know, like uh, um, the wickedness, the Almighty created evil. So the evil is even in the Almighty's control. You know, if he created it, he can destroy it. Only thing that we need to do is do good. And by doing good, right, we overcome evil to make our wills obedient to good influence and to avoid, avoid evil. You know what I mean? It's to show the greatest wisdom. You know what I'm saying? We don't have the power to destroy evil in that sense you know what i mean you know when you say the, the scripture that the wicked that the evil shall destroy the wicked if you look throughout history and look at what's going on even today you can see that has been taking place throughout history and is taking place today my bad my bad my bad actually if i'm correct with this right let me see if i can get this verse if it shall correct me right here okay if i'm correct with this it's psalm 34 verse 21 I said destroy. Let me pull that back because that's a different operative word. The word is slay. Similar to the word we have in this verse in Luke chapter 19, verse 27, where it says, Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. So evil shall slay the wicked. It sounds a lot like, but those, those mine enemies who would not that I should reign or be king over them, Bring hither, bring here, and slay them before me. <laughs> you over? This is Jesus Christ speaking according to the Bible. And it's interesting that if you ask a set of Christians concerning Luke chapter, what was that, Luke chapter 19, verse 27, I think unless they have encountered this verse, and in most forms of Christianity, they will avoid a verse like this. You know, it's, it's amazing that they can have a big book like the Bible and never come across a verse like that. And some of them have been Christians for years. You know what I mean? They've been Christian for like, like I was about to say centuries. You know what I mean? <laughs> They've been Christians for a long time. The next verse is here. So that was, that was Psalm, Psalm 34, I think, verse 20, 21. This is Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace, shalom, and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, 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 do all these things. 
So just put that on the table right there because it's important in order to understand this verse in the New Testament, we have to have the Old Testament, so-called, so-called Old Testament, but the Hebrew groundation. Because if you check Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he speaks from the point of view of the Old Testament. He makes many quotes. You know, if you if you read the New Testament and you look at the, what what the Savior is saying, what what Jesus Christ is saying, he is quoting and he is expounding and he is revealing the New Test. I mean, in the New Testament, the Old Testament. So most New Testament Christians, why there's so much confusion is because they avoid the Old Testament. So what they tend to do is off their feelings, off their feelings, they tend to interpret these New Testament verses. And because well, just they... like we reason and the other reason in there, right? Mm. We have to remember that um, according to the Gnostics and the Nazarene, the teachings of the Messiah was basically to bring the people back to the original teachings of the Torah. So the New Testament people need to understand that. Truly, truly, truly. And, 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 and there's some goofballs out there that call themselves preachers, pastors, bishops, and they will go against the Torah because they think that the Torah is simply the, the Torah of Moses. They forget that Torah means law. And if you go back to Abraham, right? It says that Abraham, he kept John's laws. And if you're looking, if you read it in the Hebrew, it says Torotai. It, it's not even saying Torah, singular, it's saying Torahs. Because Torah means direction, instruction. So what you're saying is that to take to take the people to the original, the true yes. directions, instructions. Yes. So and people need to understand something too. Mm. People argue about the, the law of Moses, right? Let me clarify. Moses don't have no law. Okay. <laughs> if if I give you something to give to somebody else, you can't go tell them it's yours. So Moses don't have no law. This is the law from the Most High. You know, we need, you know, on that particular point right there, there's an important point. I agree with the principle of what you're saying. Remember how I mentioned the, the Gnostic, what was it, the Potome's letter to Flora? You remember yes. that? We yes. have to get into that because the Torah, what they call the Torah or the five books of Moses, the main part from Exodus forward, right, to Deuteronomy, it's, it's, it's a trinity, you know, because the Almighty revealed himself in Abraham's house by, by way of three mortal men. And one of those yes. three mortal men was Yahweh himself, according to the scripture. You know what I mean? And the fingerprint of the Almighty, you'll see the Trinity is a fingerprint. There's a threeness to yes, the revelation. You know what I mean? Yes. There's, a, there's, a, there's a threeness. And even the what's called the Torah is three parts. Basically, it's the commandments that we have in Exodus. It's the, the statutes, right? The statutes yeah. that often govern like the religious aspect or when to worship and certain things regarding that. And then or, or something they call the statutes, the ordinances, right? It's kind of like more, yeah. it's very closely related. Then the third part of what's called the Torah is the judgments. So what you have is the commandment. You have the, 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 the judgments, like the ordinances. You have the ordinances that regulate like the religious life and then the social life as well. And then you have the judgments when those regulations are violated in order to keep the peace in the community. Like if I, if I took something from my brother or he, he lent me his, his ox and I plowed my field and his ox died in my field and he said that ox was, a, was like a new ox. It was a strong ox, it was a young ox. And I said it was old and sickly and everything and I don't wanna pay for it. Well, there's not gonna be peace. So therefore the Torah gives direction instructions for how to judge that situation, right? For, for my brother and myself who both are covered in people. So you have to remember that it doesn't work if ones are not covered in people. You know what I'm saying? This is for those who are in the covenant. You know what I mean? Outside the covenant, that's where those verses like evil shall slay the wicked is there. Those outside the covenant don't have these recourses. You know, because the scripture says, speak to the children of Israel. And even in the New Testament, it's speaking to the followers right, of Yeshua, the followers of Jesus Christ on one hand. And then it's saying for them, they receive mercy. 
but everyone else in the world is damnation. Like when it says in the Bible, the New Testament says, um, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, right? He who does not believe is damned already. Uh-oh, uh-oh, yep. is damned already, is damned. You know, damned, cursed, damned. But, but, but remember the Gnostics told you in the Gnostic teachings that if you are walking around as a non-believer of the Messiah, you, you walk in there. Basically, it's a zombie. What they basically exactly. So you see the same thing in the New Testament. Basically, what's called the New Testament, the principle as in the Old Testament. For those who are Israel and who are covenant, right? There's grace, but there's also rules and regulations. And when they're violated, there's judgments. There are religious or spiritual ordinances to keep the spirituality in the community. There's those things that we are told not to do. We're basically told not to go after the spirituality of other people. Other people's spirituality is good for them. It's good for them. But it's bad for us. You know what I'm saying? If they come over to us and they forsake their way, then they come under this same, that's what I said, there's one law, there's one Torah, one direction instruction. And that means there's one set of commandments, there's one set of, 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 of spiritual ordinances, and social life regulation and is one set of judgments but for everyone else that's not our business that's the problem for the hebrew israelites today that we're so concerned a lot of us with what other people are doing even with what so-called white jews are doing in a sense that a lot of our hebrew israelites will go out there and spend a lot of time trying to get validation from other people you know what i'm saying yeah instead of us building who we are just like even while the white so-called European Khazarian Jews were doing what they were doing, notice the difference. Nobody really knew about what they were doing after 740 AD when they accepted basic Judaism. Nobody knew what they was doing. You see what I'm saying? What they were doing is learning this for themselves, practicing and perfecting it for themselves, making it work for themselves. They didn't have, they wasn't going around saying, oh, those black people, oh, they're the Jews and, and, and we hate them and they're out there in social media, because there wasn't no social media. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There wasn't out there. So now in this, in this awakening time, we don't have time for that other stuff. In fact, there was my sister, Heal Up Makeda, again, there was my sister. She actually dropped a post on um, the DSR. I don't know if you saw the post that Sister Makeda, she dropped this post. And the post has said about, I think, Brother Lawrence has shared something. And she basically just kind of licked out a little bit and say, like, we have to, like, avoid all that hate stuff. You know what I mean? And focus. It's not good energy. It's not good energy. Mm, mm. It's not good energy at all. That's why I said something to you one time about posting. And I said, some people see things and they just want to post everything they see. But sometimes we have to fall back and realize what kind of energy is this putting out in the atmosphere if we post this thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to understand, you know, it's a, you know, it's an energy. Sometimes we have to avoid certain of these energies because we're trying to portray the upward energy amongst I and I. And certain posts don't do that, you know. So we have to keep full of certain things we post, you know. Just saying, you know, it's, it's different for each person. You know, I might think that you shouldn't oppose something and you think, you know, will disagree with me. But mm. it's just so ego and it's just for us to be a little more aware of the energy we put in out here. It's not so much the pose, it's the energy that comes from it, you know. True, true. And especially to ones in the faith, right, and the covenant, those of us in the covenant, especially those who, according to the covenant, are our brother, even if you view them as being white or whatnot and being you know, working the devil operation on earth, like Esau, for example. Notice of Esau. Esau is our brother, right? According to the scripts, right? Some say Esau is a white man. We don't really agree with it like that. You know, the white man in that sense. You know what I mean? It takes more spiritual discernment to recognize Esau is a black man or is a man that could pass for black. You know what I'm saying? Esau is that kind of man. Now, imagine that. How, how can we discern the Esau's Amongst us, that means we have to have know the spiritual nature of Esau. Remember, they were twins, right? So that means they, there was something about them that was similar, but they were distinct in that sense. And the scripture says we should not abhor Esau. You know what I mean? Because he's our brother, nor, nor, nor the Egyptian, nor hate on the Egyptian. Why? Because we were a stranger in his land. That doesn't mean that he didn't do to our ancestors what they did, even according to the faith. It doesn't mean that. 
but it means that we it's good over evil. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's good over evil. It's a higher height. But the only way you can come to a higher height, you can't be carnal minded. Because a carnal mind can't escape the bond, the bond of carnality, of fleshy thinking. You know what I'm saying? It's like you speaking to a carnal minded man about spiritual things and you wonder why he don't get you. I don't get you either. I don't get you. You mean you can't spiritually discern that basically that's a blockhead right there? Once you already declare the message and you declare a good word and they resist, resist, what the Bible say? They're opposing themselves. You know what I mean? But a lot of times we get all caught up because we're spending more time exoterically, like exo on, on the outer things instead of taking these things in and really getting that peace. You know what I mean? You know, really experience that the, the real shalom. You know what I mean? Not the word shalom. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the real shalom. So that as what is the Psalm 110, it says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Check it. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. That means that if we as Israel over here rising up, we should be able to rule right in the midst of them. Yes. You know, we rule them, lock them down, and then we trod forward. We rule in the midst, but but there's this idea, oh, look, 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 look what they're doing. They got this technology. Look all, you know what I'm saying? We haven't seen nothing of it in real time yet. But instead we are worried about these fears, these phobias. That's that's a state of mind right there. But on this particular verse, this verse right here, let's touch on this verse right here. But the connection with the other verses are important to understand that what Yeshua is saying here does not go contrary to the principles that we have in the Old Testament. And this is why most ones and ones, when they are confronted by such a verse, you know, they can't really answer it. Especially if it goes out again because it's been a little while, you know, people listening to different things and whatnot, so so they don't have to re, you know, like rewind. Okay, know. okay, okay, okay. Here here you go. I have it on the screen. I have a few a few exhibits on the screen. Um just to kind of follow along with this. Okay, here we go right here. Let me go back to the verse. So y'all got Isaiah forty five and seven. Hope you got Isaiah forty five and seven. Also, I hope you got um, Psalm 3421 and the verse here that we're reasoning on right here is um, is Luke, 19, Luke yeah there you go 1927 now it's interesting Luke 1927 because when I looked up slay and enemies f to bring it up on the word I mean my sword my sword software to bring it up on this my sword software I put two key words in Slay and enemies. People watching the vlog, you see it right there. Slay and enemies, right? But me and the brother, we're here on the call, and we have the video running on this end. So Luke 19:27 is on the screen, and you can see it's red letter. It says, "But those mine enemies, which or whom would not that I should reign, reign mean rule as king, over them, bring them hither, hither is here, and slay them before me." Now, this is actually at the end of a section here in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, there's a section here that begins roughly around verse 11, right? Verse 11. And here we look at the Schofield Study Bible. This section is the parable, the parable of the 10 pounds, the postponed kingdom. Uh-oh, the postponed kingdom. So, bruh. I think we need to go through this and kind of get up to this particular verse to put it into context since, you know, some of the fam on the WhatsApp, thank you for the correction on that. I mean, I said Facebook and you came in and, you know, put that clear, but so that the family all there, they're probably looking through the context so they can, can, can explain, you know, basically this, um, you know, what this is saying. In fact, wh what did you say um, when you sent the question, you forwarded a question let me see if I could bring open the phone. I don't know if you have it in front of you. You had, um, what was the exact wording of it right here? Because let me see if I can get this right here. I think wow. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. It says family. I was doing some reading and research. Can someone explain Luke chapter 19 verse 27? Question mark. I'm not trying to start any type of debate. Love alone family. And this is and this is the cousin. What's his name? Heal him up. 
Yeah, Junie Myron. Junie Myron. Hail up Junie Myron. Hopefully you can check this and hopefully we'll get a good a good just vibes and on this right here, here, here. So here let's just let's just go to the not the whole chapter, even though the whole chapter, but this section, because if you that's what we recommend the Schofield Study Bible. You know, because it has some very good notes. It, it kind of connects scripture with scripture. You know, like, because cause in order to understand this part of the scripture, right, knowing that Yeshua is a Yehudi, he's a Jew, right, even as we the black Jews, and therefore he's looking at it in a Hebrew context. This is why many of Yeshua's quotes he brings out from the Old Testament. That means that that was the groundation. That's the difference between today's Christians and the Nazarenes. And, 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 and we can say true disciples in a sense. I'm not saying that Christians are not true disciples or they cannot be that, but they're not being taught that way. They're just being given certain nice, fuzzy, warm, fuzzy, lovey-dovey kind of verses, and they're not really able to do anything to, to resist or to overcome Satan. you know, the enemy, the adversary, the adversarial forces in this world. You know what I mean? But they're waiting for God to crack the sky and come back. Right. And they can't really show that properly in the scripts There's work to be done on the earth. So here, let's go to verse 11. I'm going to go to verse 11. And so we can see what's the context of what Yeshua is saying here to to the disciples. Yeah, because when I first got this right before you start reading verse 11, when I first got this, I went and read 20, um, verse 27 first. And after I read verse 27, I was like, oh, OK, I see what he, I know. I see what he's talking about. So I read the verse before it, then the verse after it, and I said, no, I got to read this whole verse. So I read the entire verse, and after I finished reading this verse, right, I had a thought in my head of what this probably means, but I was not, you know, I didn't, I just had thought in my head, you know, so I'm not think, thinking that I write or anything, I'm just thinking that's what I think in this means. But I didn't put no words, sound out, and say anything about it, I wanted to present it to you first, and and let's see if we can reason about this and bring this out. You know, I kind of figured that you'd have something to say about this. When I looked at this myself, I kind of looked at it as he was speaking to those people who we say for the last 2,000 years been giving us a false doctrine. And that was my interpretation of what he was speaking about when I, you know, when I said, you know, when I read this, when I read the whole thing and started meditating, you know. So when he said, you know, like his enemies who, you know, wish that he would not rule over them. The ones who wish he would not rule over them, them is the one that crucified, that had him crucified in the first place mm. and start teaching a false doctrine mm. for the last 2,000 years. Mm. So that was my meditation, you check? And when you broke it down in the beginning and started to show who he was speaking about, it kind of validated what I was talking about to myself that these are also the people he's talking about. They might not be one set of people, it might be a group of people. Mm, because mm. it says enemies, it didn't say enemy. Mm, mm, mm. Check? True, yeah, true, so that true. was my meditation. So, yeah, you go ahead and drop a um, boss 11. I just wanted to put that out. Yeah, man, yeah, man. No, no, no. Give thanks for the clarity. I will, I will. Give thanks for the clarity right there. I have on the screen share um, a still of, um, you know, it do some. Um, Lika, Lika, Lika Melacht, um, Mikael, the Archangel Michael, by Africa. You know, there's a book that's out here. Let me just hear up whoever put out the book, or there's a picture right here. And it's basically, you know, the Archangel, you know, the Archangel um, in the Black and Beautiful, you know, <laughs> the Archangel in the Black and Beautiful, putting his head on, you know, putting his, putting his foot on the head. You know what I mean? That's that symbolic um, posture, you know? We also have some Georgis, you know, St. George, because St. George is another theme. So I think we have some warriors right here that we'd like to share, just just to bring out the kind of um, iconic, you know, the iconic level of what's going on, because we do have that in early, um, what do you call early Christianity, you know what I mean? You know, when we have a lot of these, um, how can we say, the true icons, you know what I mean? the true humanity and divinity because they deny the true humanity of Yeshua HaMoshiach that he is he is black and beautiful you know that's what's denied right there while they claim like you just mentioned they claim to worship his divinity you know what I mean but they lie on his humanity <laughs> you know what I mean and they create a religious doctrine Christianities that 
basically is devolving into insanities. You know, and this is not to all of the believers, but even we can show you the master himself. He has some harsh rebukes of those who come in his name and say they are Christian. They're Christian. Right. But here to the verse right here with the Georgis, you know, the Georgis front and center right here. Let's just bring this back to forward this right here to the archangel. Because remember the archangel, that's the whole high point in revelation you know the shout descending for you know the trump of the archangel so here we have luke chapter 19 verse um 27 and as they heard these things now before all of this not getting into that here but it's at the top of the chapter it's the conversion of zacchaeus zacchaeus you know one of the local yehudim you know judahites you know 1911 you're reading right 1911 we're at 1911 right now yes Yes, I. Is she? And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. He was near to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God, of Elohim, should immediately appear. Uh oh. <laughs> because they thought. So let's just chew on this verse for a moment. Just vibes in here. All right? This is what a lot of times in the counterfeit churches, they don't have time for the real study. They give you a song and a dance. I mean, literally, literally, they give you a song and a dance. <laughs> you know what I mean? But no teaching. Most of what we see in Yeshua, he is sitting down and he's teaching. He's going through either area of the faith, a, a scripture or something that the people believe. And he's breaking it down and building up on it. But he is, he's building on scripture. Yeshua was a rabbi. In the, in the words, in other words, he's a scholar of Torah, not like the other rabbis was, but in the sense of he is the teacher. You know what I mean? So my point is, this is what when we come together, each one teach one, you know, in the Holy Spirit. So it's saying that as they had heard what he had already said, he added. So we're going into what he added and he spake a parable, right? A parable, a simile, a, a, a simile, an allegory, a symbolic story because he was near to Jerusalem. I want you to check this. He was near, near. He was, it was in Jerusalem, but he was near to Jerusalem. So he's trotting with them and he speaks this. He's close to the, to the holy city, right? The city where the temple was and everything. And because they, they who heard him, they thought, I want you to zoom in on that word thought. They thought that the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of Elohim should immediately appear. You see? And think about it. It seems like that. Mm, good way of putting it. Perfect way. That no, no, no. That was that was perfect way. A self-deception. They thought, right? So he knew what they were thinking. So he's gonna drop on them this parable. So here, let's go through some of the bars of Rabboni Yeshua, Hamushia. He says. He said. Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Pause. Hmm. A certain nobleman, he didn't say a common, but a nobleman, right? He went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. I, now, Rastafari, brothers and sisters, I'm seeing this in light of, you know, the nobleman, you know, <laughs> the son of Mekonan, <laughs> this far country, us over here in the West. You know, and the Amenta, you know what I'm saying? To receive from himself a kingdom and to return. But let's go on. Verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said to them, Occupy till I come. You know, this mind's eye. You know, when somebody said, Manage this, like hold this, you know what I mean? But back, I guess back in the days it was occupy. Like occupy, like get, like get busy, you know, busy yourself. Let me look at the word quickly here. Pragma teumai, like occupied in anything. Carry on, a, carry on a business. This is the sense of the word. Carry on a business. Carry on the business of a banker, a trader. To busy oneself, to busy oneself, to trade, to occupy. Like when his man says, trade a trade. He was, yeah, he wasn't saying trade tour. As some of the John Rock brothers and sisters might think, traitor. He was saying trader, like a trader in your trade business. You know, keep it popping, like we say in the streets. You know, you know, we be um, 
in the streets, not in the in, in the industry. You know what I mean? But you're doing business. So let's go on. Verse 14. And his citizens. Uh-oh. Citizens, right? People talking about government, right? <laughs> and his citizens hated him. Uh-oh. And sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Hmm. That's deep, right? His own citizens. Ain't that something? His own citizens hated him. See that hatred? Verse 15. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called to him to whom he had given the money. Uh-oh, the money is all about, right? That he might know how much every man had gained by trading, right? So he had 10 servants. Let, let's put this in context. He had 10 servants. He go off to a far country to get a kingdom and to return, right? He has fellow citizens who hate on him, but he has servants, right? He has servants who he gives them money to occupy business while he's gone, while he's like out of town. So now he's coming to get account, you know, of how things are going. And you know, let's get, let's keep this real. Let's keep this 100, 100, right? This is just like if I give you something on consignment, right? And I give different ones something on consignment. I said, I'll be out of town for a moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I come yeah. back to town to see how, how well, you know, the consignment went, you know, how much business went on, right? Verse 16. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound have gained 10 pounds. Wow, yo, that's good. You know what I mean? Thy pound, one pound had gained. How many times he flipped this? <laughs> right, 10 times, 10 pounds. And he said to him, well done. He said, well, well, thou good servant. Well, like that's good. You know, good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little he only had one pound have thou authority over 10 cities right 10 cities that's like business like you know you're in a business and you sell a lot you do well and they bump you up to manager or they put you over a department or over other ones but here he's over 10 cities big up big up verse 18 and the second came saying adoni adon lord master Geta." Thy pound have gained five pounds. Hmm, that's good too. Right? The first one took that one pound, right? Flipped it over, made ten. The second one came, right, and made five. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. Well, that, you know that, that 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 that's 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 on the level, right? That's that's good, right? <laughs> yeah. And another came, another one came saying, Adon, Lord Master, behold, here is thy pound. What? Which I have kept laid up in a napkin. A napkin? Wait, 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 wait. You gonna leave some stacks on somebody? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gonna leave like a thousand, you know, a stack on somebody? Right? You gonna go out of town? The first homie, you know what I mean? He 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 has ten ten stacks now. The the other one has five stacks. And now you get to this third one, this other one right here. And he says, Here is your pound. So he's you giving you two stacks. No, 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 but check that he's giving you back the same stack. That's what I'm saying. He don't even have two. <laughs> now now over this Christians. He's talking about money here. Right? See this is, this is the cognitive dissonance amongst many Christians. Notice he's talking about the kingdom, but he's talking about it in business terms. He's not talking about it in, in, in a song and a dance, in, in a feel-good term, right? So, so this next one here gave him back that pound. We're going to call it that stack. And he said that he kept it laid up in a napkin. Uh, okay, let's go, let's go to verse 21. And then he goes on. He's still talking. For I feared thee. What? For I feared thee. Because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down. And reapest that thou didst not sow. So. Here if one's a King James slow. Let's just bring this out. Basically he's saying. I know you're, you know you're strict about your business. Your runnings. And you're a type of man that. You know, 
you like to get a profit where you don't invest. Is that is that a good kind of just a summary right there? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you taking up where you didn't lay down. <laughs> like someone else laid down money there and you come along and you pick up the money. <laughs> you know, and he reaping something he didn't sow. He didn't give the seed for that, but he's going to reap. So this man that says that he took that pound Right. And he wrapped up in a napkin and now he want to give it back to him. He's saying that he feared him. Right. And he saved to him. Now, the master is going to is going to talk back. Right. He says, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. Mm. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. But look, what we call him thou wicked, you ratchet servant. So this is a ratchet. So so this is a definition of what ratchet. If you had 10 servants. And you gave them some money for business, others turned it over, and one gave you back your same investment in him. It will be right <laughs> for he to be known as a wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. Let's, let's bring out the word austere. It comes from the Greek word austeros. It means of mind and manners, harsh, rough, rigid. That's what it means, austeros. Right? It means, yeah, rough, like a gale wind, you know, like a strong wind. You remember what you said about that storm that came through, you know, in the Florida region? You said it was like, you know, it was like it was, the wind was howling. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So austere means he's severe. He's severe. He's not about skin teeth. It's like when I and I say not skin teeth, right? He's not, not about no skin teeth, smiling, shucking and jiving, nah. So he's saying, he said, thou knewest that I was an austere man. I'm a rough, I'm a serious man. I'm, I'm no skin teeth man. Taking up that I laid not down. I'm a pick up what I didn't put down. And I'm a reap that which I did not sow. And all of this you know, right? Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank? that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury and usury is interest hmm now some people might get confused about this now any of y'all are Christian uh, basically he put in a napkin when you put in a napkin he ain't do nothing you have to put in a bank you can at least get two cents up <laughs> yeah, yeah if you don't want to work the money yourself that's what he's saying if you don't want to work the money yeah. yourself you, you could have put in a bank you know so that when I came here I would have, yeah, I, I get some interest on my money. And he said to them that stood by, right, take from him the pound. In other words, he didn't want to touch it himself. You know what I'm saying? He gestured. He was like, yo, 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 get that out of his hand. And give it to him that have 10 pounds. What? What? He already got 10 pounds. He had one pound turn over 10 pounds. Now give it to him. You know, he's going to get another city. You know, he's going to get another city, right? Yeah. <laughs> he got another city, you know? Ah, uh, grinding for Yeshua. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 oh. Hold on. You know how sometimes it flow when we just vibes and man, it's like the spirit will give us something. And it's like, like the Messiah said, you know, where the spirit come from, where the spirit go, you know? Only those in the spirit know, you know, when the spirit is in you. Yeah. So grinding. Yeah. Grinding for Yeshua. Yeah. Grinding for Yeshua and 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 slaying, slaying enemies, right? Slaying enemies. We're going to touch on that. So right here, he said, OK, and verse verse 25. And they said to him, Lord, master, I don't he have 10 pounds. <laughs> You know, they're saying, but well, he already grind for those 10. He already got the 10 pounds, you know, from that one pound. And, you know, they, 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 maybe that's too much, right? But look what the master says. For I say to you, but actually now here is Yeshua speaking, right? Yeshua is like entering into his parable. He's now giving the narration. He says, but I say to you, he's like the voiceover. Yeshua is the voiceover. But I, for I say to you that to everyone that hath shall be given and from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken away from him. This is the verse, bro. This is the verse right here. Now, now, what kind of, if we say we're in Yeshua, Yeshua is our Lord, you know what I'm saying? Then it's what Yeshua says goes. So what kind of Lord we serve? Check it. He's saying right here that everyone that hath shall be given. So you got to have something. 
and from him that does not have anything, even what he has, <laughs> shall be taken away from. This flips the whole have and have nots all upside down, round and round. But here's the verse. This all now leads to this verse. But to those mine enemies who would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, bring here, and slay them before me. I don't, I don't see a problem in this verse. Why can't most Christians answer this verse right here? You know, or really see this verse in the fullness of Yeshua unless they have been given a counterfeit Yeshua. Unless they've been given a counterfeit like you mentioned. You know, those, they didn't say enemy, like one enemy, right? But he said enemies. But you know where the setup was? I'm, I'm talking about in this parable. Remember, in Matthew chapter 13, it gives the reason for parables. The reason for parables is that those who want to truly become disciples may, right? But the other people can just get a nice entertaining story and just go back to their regular life, you know? Because when you get to the verse where it says, after verse 13 and 14 are the key verses, me thinks, right? It says, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said to them occupy busy yourself till i come and in verse 14 it says but his citizens hated him that's the part right there so remember he had 10 servants you see the difference these are servants right but then there were citizens in addition to these servants right that hated him now one of his servants became the servant of the hateful citizens in in his thought Th think about this right here yeah. <laughs> so when he says those enemies he's not talking about who you think he's talking about in the parable you think he's talking about his servants he's not talking about his 10 servant no, he's not talking about the servant that took the the stack and flipped it over to 10 stacks or the one who took one stack one pound and flipped it over into five pounds but he's talking He's talking about the likes of the napkin, napkin boy. Yes. <laughs> napkin boy. It reminds me of that, that thing with Michael Jackson. Tito, you got a tissue? <laughs> and then Tito, you got a tissue? You know, but that's even more understandable. Um, well, well, this is understandable. I'm just saying that is a whole different, that's a whole different thing right here. So the reason why people don't like this or some Christians may not like this is because those Christians might have been led astray by the Christians that Yeshua talks about when he says, many shall come in my name. And what's his name? According to the English, Jesus, right? They say Jesus. They come in Jesus' name, right? And they say they are Christ. They say they are Christ when they say they're Christian. They're saying they are, they are, they are Christians. They are little Christ. They are Christ-like ones. You know, like, like if I'm a follower of... Um, you know, Buddha, for example, it's because I want to know the Bodhi. Bodhi is the, the knowledge. In, in other words, that the Buddha, the Buddha is that one, the enlightenment. The Bodhi is the enlightenment, and the Buddha is the one who seeks enlightenment because you seek to reach that height as well. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, kind of plain and simple, you know, like that. People try to say, oh, it just means follower of Christ. Okay, let's just take that right there. Well, if you're a follower of Christ, what does this verse mean? Setting the part is the slave part, right? You know, because they don't believe that he's going to slay. They don't even say how he's going to slay them. If you think about it, remember how the word says how you slay them with the breath of his mouth? <laughs> and the Come brightness of... <laughs> huh? Come on with a double-edged sword. Exactly. It didn't say a gun. It didn't say a knife. It didn't say he's going to choke them out. It didn't say he's going to chop off their head. It didn't say, but it says he's going to slay them. They're going to be slain for one reason. The slave part is not the important part right there, really. It's just the judgment. It's the judgment in the verse. The important part is actually is from the other verse, the hate, right, that lead to these enemies, these haters, right, who would not that he should reign over them. I mean, but think about this for a moment. If somebody give me a stack, right, like this, 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 this noble man did, Right, you know, he invested in me. I'm his servant, but he he leave me with me a stack, and he says, "Occupy, busy." He says, "Do business with it." Remember, if that one who got the stack 
didn't want to do the business. He said, hey, 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 before you go, before you go, noble man, um, I, I, I can't or I'm not good at it. He could have got fired. You know what I'm saying? He could have. I, I don't think the man would have killed him if he said, I, I can't I can't occupy. He could have said he can't occupy, you know, not occupy Wall Street. Well, well, well <laughs> in the sense, you know, he could do some business on Wall Street, too. You know, somebody invest in you, but somebody invested in him. That's the point where Yeshua is like saying to us as as disciples or even as Christians, followers of Christ. He's investing in us. We got the Bible here, the Bible and being able to read these things and reason with one another. That's part of the investment. So how are we, you know, how are we... It's a mindset too, because mm. think about it. Mm. The one who had, who had the one, right? I'm pointing a napkin, right? He telling a man who just don't give multiple man free money to go invest and, and occupy. And he is a man <laughs> who want things he ain't work for him. He, this is what you telling him. Ah, uh, biting the hand. Uh. Your view of this man is opposite of what he just showed you. Mm. Bagorasu Tenekesu. That's what they call it. <laughs> Go through, Read go through. Read that part again. Read that part again. Which, which verse was that when he tell? Oh, tell oh, him? oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I knew what kind of, I knew what kind of bloke you were. You know, he yeah, said, it said, it said, it said, a, a, okay, I saw verse 20. It says, and another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Verse 21. For I feared thee. Because thou art an austere man, you're a serious man, no skin teeth man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. <laughs> you making a man sound like an ungenerous person. And this is the man who just give in. Yeah, he didn't say take your own money. And, no, and he <laughs> give you money to go do something with out of his pocket. So you could do, get something for yourself. And notice this is the man you making all the seem to be like a cheap skip. Oh, oh, but notice the same man didn't do as man in the streets or the streets would do. He didn't do as some of y'all who may say gangster or whatnot, you out in the street on the block or whatever. He didn't take the money back from them. You know what I mean? He gave them a pound, they turned it over and made one made ten, one made five. He didn't say, Well, give me the money. He just said, Well done. And here's and here's some cities. To manage, you know what I'm saying. So he's given even more. He <laughs> yeah, he didn't ask back for nothing. But this other man, he comes and he gives it back, and he even had to say, "Well, well, I had it laid up in a napkin." You know that part right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, laid up in a napkin. And he says, "For I fear thee." Now that's the that's the part right there. Where you got to zoom in on fear. Some people say that fear really stands for false evidence appearing real that, that's how they use it nowadays and there's something to that that's not the full the fullness of it in the coin of Coptic Greek it's the word phobeo phobeo you know what phobeo is it's the word we use phobia you know phobia yeah. phobia come from this Greek word here for fear phobeo 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 is to have a phobia to put to flight by terrifying put to flight flight Struck with fear, seized by alarm. Struck with amazement, fear, fear. And look what it says. It says, hesitate. He's hesitant, right, to do something for fear of harm, right? Then in a secondary sense, it can have, in a higher sense, a reverence, venerate, right, to, to treat with deference or reverential obedience. So it's not the same kind of fear like we would say today. You know what I'm saying? We could say that the other men feared in the real reverential, as we say, respectful way. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they did something. His fear, in a sense, in the context, it almost is like, I respect you. You know, when they say in the movies, they'd be like, um, permission to speak freely, permission granted. Respectfully, you know, like, you know, when they say respectfully, you know, you know, when they say respectfully speaking, <laughs> when a lot of time when they use like respectfully speaking, a lot of times it's disrespect. So when a man says, I fear thee in the translation, it could also be translated as like, I respect you. Yo, 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 here's your money. 
You know, I respect you, G. I respect you. Cause I know you, you you don't skin teeth. You're a serious man. You know, you 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 know, you real, you take up, you know, what you don't lay down and you reap what you don't sow. <laughs> so so you can look at the verse also in that sense. If you look at it, that he's fear, like he has a phobia, like a mental condition, so on and so on, but he gives a reason. He don't say, I feared you. You know what I'm saying? He could say, I feared you and left it short. But he gave a because. You know what I mean? That because you are an austere, you're a serious man, you're a rough man. You know what I mean? You're not joking and stuff like that. You're serious about your business. You know? And then the nobleman says, out of your own mouth will I judge you. Notice that. Out of your own mouth. You're a wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man. So his excuse for fearing he didn't say you shouldn't fear me. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not going on that counterfeit Christian thing. There is a there is a place for respect. Because cause when there's no respect, you know, like even, even among brothers and honor and stuff, this is when things go wild. This is when we, we, we go back to the wild. This is when civilization break down. This is when people start to kind of like, you know, like, like live in caves and stuff <laughs> you know what i mean for fear for, for for that other that bad kind of fear so he's saying since you knew i was like this you know what i mean why didn't you you know put my money into the bank you know yeshua speaks more about he uses the example of money and business to give us an example of real spirituality and this is the part that's lost on, uh, I think, a lot of us. It took me a while to really recognize because I had an impression about Jesus and the church and, you know, from experiencing as young, you know, the song and the dance of it all. But in through Rastafari and the teaching of his majesty and then following his guidance, guidance, you know, like, you know, for my part, I glory in the Bible and to find this truth for I and I self, you know, I begin to recognize these things and say, Chan, he doesn't use like money. Money is... Money is like, it's, 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 it's not good or evil in that sense. In fact, it's actually good. You see what I'm saying? In principle, it's actually good. You see what I'm saying? But because of the fallen nature of people and because of the deceptions that go on from generation to generation, I mean, how many Christians have been taught that, that Jesus wants us poor? I mean, let's just be real with this. <laughs> you know, begging. He wants you begging, like Lazarus, you know, by the rich man's gates. No, Lazarus by the rich man's gates, that's one of those, those cases of where if the rich man was righteous, you know what I mean? He could have worked some good for that, for that poor man named Lazarus. He could have done some good. I'm not saying that that, that poor man would have, you know, however he was turned his life around, but it said that the, that the rich man, he just ignored the poor man that was right at outside his gates you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know like there's somebody sleeping outside your house right you're not you're not like that rich man wearing purple all the time like iuic or whatnot like that you're not like that you know what i mean you don't have what, what he had his dolo in today's terms you know what i mean a humble working man you know what i'm saying but if you saw somebody laying outside your gates you know and, that, and they were always there i'm i'm sure there'll be some sort of an intervention, even from the little bit that you got. You know what I'm saying? But the point is that Yeshua speaks more about money as an example of our spirituality. Can I, can when I go? They take some, go when they take some of the things that is said, like they said in meek, when they, like when they use the word meek, right? A lot of people, for some reason, interpret the word meek with having nothing, with like possession. And meek has nothing to do with having possession of anything. No, no, meek is, is when you do have possessions and you're humble about it and you're giving yeah, about what it. I mean. that's, 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 yeah, that's what they look at it as like, you know, like you have no possessions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's when they say the meek shall inherit the earth. Not realizing meek is a demeanor. It, 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 I mean, it's not a position or a status as far as a people. It's a, it, you know, it's a kind of a demeanor of how you are as a person. You know? You made me see something just now what you said. You made me see something now in what you said about the meek shall inherit the land. Because the ones who are too prideful, they can't live humbly in the land. Think about it for a moment. They have to go to the city. 
They got to go to the city. <laughs> city life. <laughs> it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Because the Miki, like you said, it's a state of mind, a state of heart, the state of mind. Yes. They inherit the land. Not only can they live off the land, but the land, them and the land have a harmony. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know, they talk to the land, the land talks to them. The crops grow better under their hand. You know, <laughs> that's all part of Jaja plan. <laughs> uh, part of the plan. All right, there, there, there. There was another verse that I was going to, um, oh, about the whole thing about money. Because this actually leads into money, right? And, you know, they said the fool and his and his money. Ah, now we can apply that to this here, too. Think about that man that come forward with that. He, he was given that pound. He wrapped up the napkin. He gave it back. And then what, what was the judgment? What was the judgment when when the servants, the other servants was like, um, but you giving it to the you giving that pound to the man who got 10 pounds. Yeah, give it to the no, 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 but in verse 25, it's like a little complaint. And they said to him, Lord, he have 10 pounds, almost like a little protestation. You know, like, 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 why are you giving to him? He already got 10 pounds. You see, because remember, he's a serious businessman, a nobleman. You know what I mean? Remember, he now got cities. Notice this. The nobleman has cities. He went to get a kingdom. So now he has to supply for that kingdom. So he needs administrators who will be on their grind. So you won't have no kind of poverty stricken basket case excuse my language but a but a but a ish hole of a country you know what i'm saying i mean let's keep it real <laughs> you know because some people think because some of our countries today are the way they are this is a sign of religious holiness no it's not you know for real they think because, because <laughs> if your nation is it could be the first Trump, might as well be the last, right? Wow. If your nation is a shithole nation, don't think that you're closer to God, you know, in the, in the, in the Judeo-Christian biblical sense. Nah, there's something wrong. That means if you claim it to be about God and your country is a shithole, that means your, your spirituality is off. See, a famine may happen from time to time, even in the, even in the promised land. But if your country is just like a famine country, you know what I mean? Or your condition as a Christian. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was that song that says, I've been, I've been young and now I'm old and I haven't seen the, the righteous what, what, begging, the right, forsaken, or, or, or his seed begging for bread. I'm trying to get the King James um, lyric in, in my mind again. You know, I've been young and now I'm old. You know what I mean? Because the righteous, you know what I mean? The righteous, because we're doing what is right. We may not have much. You remember that? That's how a lot of our old time, like parents used to say. You remember? They didn't have much. But it's like, didn't our grandmamas and grandpapa, pappies and mammies kind of testify like that? That they didn't have much. But they were kind of, in a, in a righteous sense, proud of the fact that they were not in a destitute situation because they're not being a destitute situation where they have to almost like beg the enemy. <laughs> they, live, like, they live good amongst each other. You know, that was part of the, you know, the beauty of it. You know, they live, you know it was a, you know, a, like a more of a communal type of living amongst us in those days too. You know? They shared, you yeah. know, um, they shared, they sometimes took all that they had. They, this is where the Kalalu and the, um, the gumbo kind of comes from. Yeah, I have it right here. Psalm 37, 25. Apologies, brothers and sisters. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, his race, his seed begging bread. Now, let me say this right here because some people might, might, you know, remember Price of the Truth is pay attention. They might think that we're saying that people who are begging, people who are begging, if you can assist and help, if, if, if the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth so moves you, do so, you know, with the, with the least strings attached as possible, you know what I mean, or expectation, 
You see what I'm saying? You know, do it for the almighty sustain of the universe. Or if you please, do it for the universe. You know what I'm saying? But I have been young and now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Forsaken. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why we got a lot of that going on today. This is what I'm seeing happening now. You know what I mean? As we live in this Western Gentile society that for the past how many years? Maybe about, what, 50 years? 40, 50 years has been kind of anti-Christ with a passion. When I say anti-Christ, I'm saying anti-Christ or anti-Bible Christ. Let me say it like that. Anti-Bible Christ. In other words, the Christ according to what the scripture is really saying. You see what I'm saying? Because they have been anti-Christ with the white Jesus and all of that. You know, so yes. But even then, some people didn't really pay so much attention to the pictures to the fake icons, you know what I'm saying? But like our ancestors, some of them really tried to live that life. And though they did not have much, you know, they were not too proud. They were meek. They were humble. You know what I mean? They could That's share right. their food together. Like if you got a couple of potatoes, I got some greens, you know what I mean? Some I got some onions, you know what I mean? We might just come together and, 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 and put a pot together, you know? <laughs> that means we all can eat. You know, yeah, it's not a, a big banquet and everything, but you know, we all are fed. You see what I'm saying? And, and none of us had to go beg. Each of us brought something to the table. You know what I mean? Each of us brought something to the, to the meal. But by ourselves, it's like that old parable about all these starving people, right, were around a bowl. You know, like a, a big, like a, a, a bowl of, uh, say, stew or something. You know what I mean? But they had these spoons. I don't know if you heard this one. I might not be telling it the best way, but the spoons were very long. So whenever the people tried to, you know, these starving people were all sitting in a circle around this bowl, but they had these spoons and the spoons were very, very long, right? And so they tried to feed themselves with the long spoons. But what was happening was that they couldn't get the long spoons to their mouth. And they were suffering like in this one room. And then the angel took a, took, takes you to see the next room, right? In the next room, people are in the same similar situation, but they're all happy, they're all fed, and they're eating. Because okay. instead of trying to feed okay. themselves, they were feeding the other person across the other end of the big bowl. <laughs> the big pot, should I say. <laughs> yes, community. Yes, we have to community. You know, we have to community each other. Man. That is the whole key to it. You know, it's a we're not here for, you know, we're not here for our, you know, for ourselves, you know, we're here for the collective, you know. You, you, you know, I wish I had that picture right here, right now, because I seen a drawing with that right there, you know, but they were feeding, yeah, they were feeding, they were feeding each other. You know, they were feeding each other. So part of the, you know, part of the reason is, is the misconception about money. I was going to point to something else. I think it was um, Luke chapter 16. It's another chapter where Yeshua, where the Savior, where Jesus is, is giving a parable that he's likening to the kingdom of heaven, but he's using money as a metaphor. You know what I'm saying? Which is kind of interesting because the only thing that, that people in the world besides the real almighty call the almighty is the almighty what? Dollar. Dollar. The only thing that other thing that besides the almighty that they call almighty my right, entity is is the dollar almighty dollar so it's interesting that even in Luke chapter 16 a couple of chapters earlier he gives this whole parable about an unjust steward that would be like today a bad manager basically we could translate that and bring that in today's language by saying a bad manager right and there's this bad manager who was kind of like, you know, like pilfering from the business, right? And so the boss is about to fire him. You know what I mean? Is about to give him his leave of notice. And so before he leaves, right, he thinks of a plan because he's like too old. You know what I mean? He's too old to like kind of dig and he's too proud to beg. So he thinks of a very, um, a very wise plan you know, considering, you know, considering his, uh, his situation. I don't know whether the, I have time to go there, 
you know, on this right here. But I think it connects with the main theme. Like the main verse that told about slay them. Yeah, Yeshua is saying that those who do not want him to reign ultimately will be slayed. You know what I mean? There's really no other way. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there's no way around. You can get with this or you get with that. I compare that verse to the other verse in the gospel where it says, he who is he who believes and is baptized, the same shall be saved. He who does not believe is damned already. So those enemies of his were those who did not credit. Right? That's that, that's the whole problem with the man that that gave him back the the the, the pound. He discredited him. You know what I'm saying? He did not credit him. You know what I mean? He he discredited him. You know he didn't have no faith in him. You know what I mean? And he was on the side of the hatred of him. And therefore, when the kingdom is established, a lot of these ones who claim to be Christian, who don't get with the true message of Christ, they have more to account for than somebody who is a so-called heathen or so-called pagan. You know what I mean? A heathen and a pagan, he's going to deal with them on different levels. Right? We almost know exactly how you're going to deal with one who, 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 who come in his name. <laughs> Right. And say that they are, you know, like, you know, that they are a follower of him or Christ. You know, people try to say, say Christian is not saying you're a little Christ, but we'll touch on that elsewhere. But he gives this parable here and there's a part of this parable. I just want to show you right here. Uh, are, are, are you able to have the scripts in front of you? Luke 16. Yeah. 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 I'm right there. OK. Luke 16. It's a rather... It's not a long, a long chapter. I think I could read at a lively pace. You think we need to go from, you know, the top of the track? Let it ride. Let it ride. Okay, hold on for a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm putting in Rich, and Stewart, Rich Stewart, right? So I can get, I can get this verse right here. Rich Stewart. Yeah, there we go. Luke chapter 16, verse one. And he said also to his disciples. They said Christians. Did, did he say? Did, did he said to the Christians, <laughs> disciples. Disciples. Oh, I thought he said to the Baptists, the Methodists, disciples. Right? He said to the disciples. Right? That means students. You're learning something. No song and dance now. There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused to him that he had wasted his goods. So here's the charge. Here's the setup of the parable, the allegory. People like to say the Bible has is allegory. Well, we're dealing for allegory. Let's see if you can understand the allegory, the parable, and the application. There was a certain rich man. Now notice Yeshua's parables, even when he gives some parables about the kingdom, he uses these rich man, noble man. You know what I mean? You know, like he he's using a certain, you know, a certain character. The rich man. Now, today we look at the rich man. Even a lot of Christians look at the rich man, right? In always a bad sense. Some look at always in a bad sense or always in a good sense. But here, Yeshua is giving us, he's making sense right here. He said, there's a certain rich man who had a steward. Now, the steward is like a manager. Just for us to understand it today, it's like a manager, right? And this, this manager or steward, right, was accused. Somebody accused, he was accused to the rich man that he had wasted his goods, like wasted his merchandise, his merch. Verse 2, and he called him and said to him, how is it that I hear this of thee, of the eye? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Now let's pause on this right here, the word stewardship. I want everybody to get this word right here. I talked about this before, but now in this vlog, I'm able to give a little bit of proof right here, here, here. This is about economy, right? This is about being on your grind, being on a Yeshua grind, economic grind, right? Here is oikonomia. The word stewardship is oikonomia. Now, that's a Greek, a Copto Greek word, right? Coin a Greek word. It means the management of a household, household affairs, management, oversight, administration, Manager, overseer, stewardship, administration, dispensation. But you know what the word really come from? It come from two words. Oikos, right? Oikos, oikonomos. Oikonomos means economics. We get the word today of economics from oikonomos. Oikonomos, economics properly does not mean money. 
economics properly means managing a household, administrating a household, like running a, you know, running a house. Like, like when we say a house, we're talking about a house in our true sense, you know, like an African Nollywood sense. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You, you watch the African movies, even they yes. have like a compound and the compound got people on it. It's a big old, it's like a big old estate, but that's what it's talking about here. That's how we used to live. And that's how we will live right in the liberty again. So a manager of a household, right? So just everybody take note of this. Yeshua speaks about economics. Yeshua on economics, right? And this is a parable here on economics, like the other one, where he says that he's gonna slay the enemies that don't want him to rule over them. You know what I mean? Like, like somebody's somebody hates you in business, but you were trying to hit them up, you trying to help them out. So he called the steward to him, right? And said, Give an account of thy stewardship because you can't no longer be my manager. Then the steward said within himself, pause. Where did the, the steward talk back to the rich man? To, to, within himself. So it's like, well, you know, when we, <laughs> when you say you talk, we talk to himself. We, we're speaking to I and I self. No cray cray here. It's just reality here. What shall I do? You ever say to yourself, what shall you do? <laughs> Who are you talking to? You're talking to you. <laughs> what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship, the economics right i cannot dig right to beg i am ashamed so check it even though this steward no doubt was actually embezzling right the mass is good it's almost like you ever been on a job and they have like office supplies you ever take home a couple of office supplies i did i've done that let me point point that out i did that a few times at kinko's and thing i have to say this just to you know it says it says he he who covers up his his sins his uckery right will not prosper whoso confesseth and forsaketh them will receive mercy so i want to receive mercy right but <laughs> ha, ha, have you ever done that no no i want i want to talk to the people have you ever done that <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, you, you work someplace, you know, you take a little bit, such and such. Now, often even the boss sometimes, if it's a good business, the business doing well for itself, and it, it's not a little problem, you take a little something. You know what I'm saying? But this steward, no doubt, <laughs> had wasted, you heard? <laughs> had wasted. So maybe he didn't take it, but, but he was wasting the goods. He wasn't moving the goods. You know, like if you have a, fr a fresh... That's worse than taking it. Yeah, that's worse than taking it. You have a fresh fruit and vegetable stand, right? And you ain't moving that. How long is the fresh mango gonna stay fresh? <laughs> How long can you have that on your stand? And you see boxes of mangoes just riding, and you'll be like, wait, my manager of my business here is not, you know, what he's what's he doing? Right? Now the steward, he recognized he didn't talk back to the boss. You know, people say, I'll tell the boss you could take your job and shove it, but notice. Yeah, he can take his job and shove it, but you don't have a job and you don't provide a job for nobody. See, we have to be real with this because even in the kingdom, in our own kingdom, in the kingdom of the Almighty among I and I, right? You know, work got to go on. Thing have to go on, man. What do you think it is? Lazy business? <laughs> you know, even in the, the Garden of Eden, he had to tend it, right? He had to tend the garden. You know what I'm saying? He had to do a little something, something, something. So the, so the steward talked to himself. He asked himself what he's going to do. He, he said his Lord taketh away from him my, um, the stewardship. He didn't say my stewardship, but the stewardship. Even in his speaking about the Lord, he didn't have no hatred against the master, against his employer. Now, I'm not saying people's employers are the best, but you have to understand a principle here. Sometimes we hate on our employers, but we want to do our own business, and we find that it's hard to do our own business. Think about it for a moment. Yeah. There's a principle there because when you do your own business, you go, and sometimes we want to do a business, but we hate so much on the one that employs us and writes our check. You see what I'm saying? We even consider it slavery. How's it slavery you getting paid? That's foolish, man. That's foolish. You know what I mean? <laughs> And you can do whatever for your money. You don't even have to come in. They're not going to send nobody after you and grab you back and drag you back to the employment. You know, unless you're incarcerated, maybe. You know what I'm saying? You know, because that's that's not free. Right? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. 
I cannot dig. He has self knowledge. Does he have self gnosis, bro? He's self aware, right? Yeah. He's self aware. He says, I cannot dig. To beg, I am ashamed. Right? He kept it 100 with himself. I am resolved. <laughs> Get this? I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, right? Like when he's fired, he already know he got a pink slip coming. They may receive me into their houses. This, Yo, yo, he's smart here. <laughs> now remember, it's Yeshua who's teaching us this. How many times in church they be talking about these things here? Come on now. This is the whole lesson here. And there's a blessing here. Once you get through the testing here. Verse 5. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors. 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 Not creditors. Debtors. To him and said to the first. How much owest thou to my Lord? To Adoni. <laughs> Yo there's a wisdom here. Take note. Take note right. Verse 6. And he said. An hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, take thy bill and sit down quickly. Because you know you're about to get fired. Sit down quickly and write 50. Write 50. So, wait, wait, hold on for a moment. He's now going around. See, now he's doing the work he should have been doing. He already figures out, like, the boss already found some accusations against me. So he's going to be investigating this. Once he finds out that this investigation it is true that I waste this, he's going to kick me out quick fast. So what I need to do, I need to act fast, you know, because I can't dig. That's not, that's not my work. He, he's an office, you know, he's an office. <laughs> he work in the office, you know what I'm saying? He, he's, he, he work in the house. <laughs> he, he work in the house, right, bro? Yeah. He's a, he's a houser. He's not a fielder, right? No. So, so he goes to the debtors, the people who owe his boss something. There is what they call overdue accounts or whatever, settle to settle accounts. He asks how much, right? And the man said a hundred measures of oil. Now I like to look up what a measure of oil is. That sounds like it's a big thing. It don't sound like a little thing. It don't sound like no body oil. You know what I'm saying? You know, it sounds like some big, you know, some big business aguan. So the steward said, okay, he wrote him up a bill, right? And he said, sit down quickly and write fifty here. You know what I mean? So basically, you owe my boss a hundred, right? Pay up fifty. Pay up fifty. You know, basically, I'm gonna cut you a break. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he's looking out for for after he gets fired. Verse seven. Then said he to another. So he didn't count as going to one. He's he's going around. He's looking at, you know, he's looking at the debts. You know, and how much owest thou? And he said a hundred measures of wheat. Wheat, right? So some big, some big, uh, you know, some big things are going. On. And he said to him, "Take thy bill and write four score." Now a score in old English was twenty. So so four twenties is what eighty. Mm, you you always what's going on here, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's cutting these deals now, and the Lord commanded the unjust steward, "Hold up." Hold up the boss. But now think about this. Say we running herbs man runnings. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at it like that. Just keep it with what some of us might know a look of something. Others know some other stuff, but we're not gonna talk about that. But the same principles apply. You know, the same business, business ethics apply. The Lord commended, commended, let me make sure I get this word correct. Epaneo, approved of, praised, approved of, praised, commended. The unjust do it. Unjust. What's the unjust mean? Adikia, the injustice, unrighteous. So he's unrighteous. He's an unrighteous steward. <laughs> he's a wrongful steward. <laughs> but on this, he had to get praise, right? Why? Because, 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 because he had done wisely. Because he had done what? He had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light uh-oh uh oh you know like when somebody did somebody Ooh! like you heard that <laughs> you know what i'm saying he's saying 
that, now notice this, Yeshua is giving us this, those in Christ, those in Jesus, those, you know, you, you could say in the gospel. He's giving us this right here and he's showing this example right here. And then he says this, he says, because he had done wisely. So does Yeshua respect foolishness, stupidity, no. No, no, no. the Lord and Savior? You know, as ones will say, died for I and I. Well, we, we, we'll put that in context. You know, he died because many of I and I people then wanted to kill him. You know, that's, that's the connection right there. You know, for the children of this world, of this world, are in their generation wiser than the children of light. What is that saying about? So it's not saying that the, the believers, the faithful, who might not be fully in the comprehension of the light are not children of the light. You know what I'm saying? But you're being foolish children of the light. We're being foolish children when we don't get what he's really saying right here. Because it doesn't end right here. Now, some people will try to spiritualize this. I'm just going to put that on the table. Some people say, Yadin, Yadin Ben Kushi, Ben Kushi, you're off on that. Because this is talking about spiritual things. It's not talking about carnal things. You're talking about carnal, you're talking about money. It's not talking about money here. Really. Let's read on. Verse 9. And I say to you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Oh, wait, hold on for a moment. Who is speaking here? <laughs> they said red letter is, is Jesus, Yeshua. Jesus is speaking, right? Jesus is speaking. He says, I say to you. To who? To us. Ones like us. Disciples, right? Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteous. Okay, what's mammon? Mammon. Well, you know, what's mammon? Maybe people need to know what mammon is. Here we have mammon, the G3126. And it's from the Koine Greek word mamanos. Uh, mama, ma, no, mamonas. 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 Mamonas is treasure, is riches where it is personified and opposed to God. Wait, wait, hold on for a moment. How can this be the definition here? Mammon is treasure or riches, and here they say in the strong definition, where, no, this is Brian, the Thea, Thea, Thea definition, where it is personified and opposed to Elohim. Make ye friends of wealth, right? Of wealth, right? Confidence that is figuratively wealth. Look, look, look at the definition. Or hear the definition, my brother. Confidence that is figuratively wealth personified. Avarice. So we're talking about riches, basically. So Yeshua here is saying, <laughs> make to yourselves friends of the mammon of... Wait, wait. He, he must be speaking to the Pharisees, right? He, he must be speaking to the Sadducees, right? He's speaking to the Herodians. He's not speaking to the Nazarenes. Let me look at this again. Oh, chapter 16, verse 1. And he said to his disciples. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so that, that means this, this, is, this is a commandment. And somebody, somebody say to you, you know, make this happen. If I say to make this happen, bro, in a sense, I am commanding you. If you tell me, you know, make it get done, you, you commanded me. So Yeshua is commanding us. He says to make to yourselves friends. <laughs> of the mammon, of the treasures of unrighteousness. Whoa. You know, you hear a lot of Christians say, I wouldn't be dealing with that person. <laughs> That's the same thing they said about Yeshua, right? <laughs> when Yeshua was with the prostitutes and the politicians, right? But that and, was the job he said he didn't go for the righteous, right? What sense does that make? If I'm a doctor and I'm just coming for really healthy, healthy people, or, you know, organic, vegan, microbiotic, never been sick, don't have sniffle, got very little to no mucus. I mean, what, 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 what am I, what am I be saying? You, you very healthy. Feel good about yourself, you know? That when ye fail, you see that? I'm still in verse 9. That when ye fail, oh, wow. So wait, wait, Yeshua is telling the disciples, us, that there will be a time, <laughs> right? He says, when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. This, is, this seems to be contrary to what I hear in some of them churches, right? Or the prosperity pimps, they will go to one extreme. What's happening is that Yeshua is giving us the balance right here. 
So you have some Christian that go to one extreme, you know what I mean, of denying money and the and the role of money even in the gospel. This is the gospel. Is this not the gospel? It's the gospel according to Luke. So the gospel is saying that we should make to ourselves of the treasure, the riches of unrighteousness, that when we fail, they may receive us into eternal habitations. Then in verse 10, he's going to seal it, right? Furthermore, he that is faithful in that which is least. Uh-oh. What's least here? Money, right? Money is least. Riches are least. But he don't say that riches don't matter. He don't say that money don't matter. He don't say that. That's some foolish. That's, that's antichrist. Actually, that's antichrist. That's against Christ. That's against Moshiach. That's against his teaching. That's against the gospel. That's not what he said. If you come in Jesus' name and say you are Christian and you deny the principles here, you are antichrist. And I'll say repent. Have a change of mind. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. So it means that if a man say he loved the Lord, right? <laughs> right? And he borrowed some money from you, <laughs> right? And he act like he didn't borrow no money and he don't want to pay or he, he, he don't remember how much the money was and he try to pay less. You, you still should be good. You, you should still do good, right? But it kind of shows his faith. I must, you know, it shows the level of his faith. And it's sad, really. You know what I mean? It's sad because the money is the least. But they flip the whole thing upside down where they make money the most. You see what I'm saying? They, they make it like it's all about money. Either it's all about money in the prosperity pimp sense, you know, or it's all about money in the sense that it's all about money that we're not dealing with. We deal with everything else. Jesus, afterlife, pearly gates, all they'll, they'll, they'll make believe stuff. They'll make up Christian fables. Santa Claus, Easter egg, bunny rabbit, right? But then with money, they, they're like, what do, they, what do they call it? The vow of poverty? <laughs> what? Chapter and verse? <laughs> you got a chapter and verse on that? <laughs> if therefore y'all have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Oh my goodness. Here where Yeshua, he's doubling down on this. If we are not faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Oh, my goodness. That's why they don't got the truth, bro. No, notice that. That's why I don't have the truth. You know, and they talk about Illuminati, Illuminati. <laughs> Secret society. Oh, they're just looking for money. You know, they're, they're all after money. And they're making it seem like they believe in Jesus or Yeshua or the Bible. But Yeshua is giving us this lesson on this that money matters. Yeshua basically is teaching on money matters. And not money matters in itself, but money is the least. Money is like the test. It's like the test. You know, that's why when they look at Jews or from a Judaic, a Torah observing Judaic view, they always tell my old Jews always be doing for one another in a sense and such and such because that is the tenets of what they say they believe. That's why they said money reveals you. Mm, yeah, yeah. They say, oh, he got rich and he changed. No, 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 no. No, he didn't change. <laughs> he came out. <laughs> yeah, he was revealed. He was revealed. <laughs> you know, he said, oh, now <laughs> I don't have to hide nothing. But the, this verse this verse caught me up on many nights of meditation, man. Th these verses here. Because what he says, you know, he says, and if you, if y'all have not been faithful in that which is another man's, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, another man, they'll say, I don't care about any man, it's only the Lord. You know, you know how they, that makes it, they're just dealing with the Lord and, and, and forget humanity, you know, forget other, other men and people in a sense. But notice what it says, if y'all have not been faithful in that which is another man's. Who shall give you that which is your own? Remember I was talking about business? Yeah. Copy hands sometime. I understand, man, because how can I say I didn't always like going out to work for somebody else and some of the different businesses, but I understood something. That I work this work and they paid me my pay. And and even I can, you know, do a little like the, the steward pro you know, you could take a little something, something. You know what I mean? You know, as long as you don't rob 
you know, the bottom line of the business. I'm not even saying that was right. I'm just saying that's what was done. You know, but there was other people. I remember one day I used to work at this Kinko's up in um, 54th Street. It's right across from Studio 54. You know, the actual Studio 54 in that same little block. It's actually it's actually a door down from where Tupac got shot. It was the Kinko's I used to be working, you know, back uh, almost like, man, that was almost like what, about more than 20 years ago, back in the 90s and stuff, right? The Kinko's, right? And um, I remember I came to work one month, I think it was a Monday, you know, after the weekend and everything, what they call the weekend, right? <laughs> weekend, the, after the strong. And um, there was this, um, this, this black sister, she reminded me of somebody from the projects and stuff like that. You know, yeah, I grew up part of the time in the projects, you know what I mean? Bed Stuy, do or die, you know? And she came in on, on this Monday and like she was tired, she must have been sleeping, maybe she was out partying or whatever. And she was like leaning over the, the front counter and had this real long face and like, like, oh, I'm just tired of this. I can't wait to get paid. I'm like, yo, it's just Monday. You know what I mean? I, it, it like surprised me so much, her lack of a work ethic. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes I was tired going into work, but you know what? I recognize I make money, you know, because of the money that they hire me for. And because I know my job, sometimes the customers hit me up with money. So it's like money that is not taxable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I know I'm going to get some money. I'm going to get some money for myself from working my part of the shift. When I get the, my paycheck, you know, the week or the two weeks or whatever that, that whole thing was. And on a daily basis, you know, treating the customer, like serving the customers. You know, like, you know, you when you're working in in non-black businesses i gotta put this on the record non-black non-black after 400 years of slavery businesses i, I have to say it like that because the, the whole experience messed us up we wasn't always like that africans are not always like that in their own business and black people outside of this thing that we experience are not always like that but when you are working some of these jobs and some of y'all know this so you, some of y'all get tips sometimes if you're working in some industry where there's the the nations the nations, you know, like the other nation other than our once lost now found beta Israel over here, you know, 400 year nation over here. You you notice that they always, you know, a lot of times they hit you up. You know, what I mean, you know, like you treat them a certain way. And it doesn't mean you have to kiss no backside or nothing like that. You're just doing your job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what this means. And if y'all have not been faithful in that which is another man's. Another man's who shall give you that which is your own. So people always talk about their own thing, doing their own thing. And some people, a few people do succeed or do prosper, are able to make it happen. But a lot of people fall short and they wonder why. And they get envious. You remember like in the parable, the other parable, they get envious against the one that does. Like, for example, that girl, what's her name? The, you know, rest in peace, as we say, you know, hopefully rise in glory. The one, Shaquella, Shanquella Robinson, the one that she paid yeah, for this. Yeah, she paid for the trip going down there. She paid for the trip. She paid for this 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 resort in Mexico, blah, blah, blah. And she even, my, my wife was telling me she had a business, right? She had a business, some clothing business that was doing well. And how she was always like kind of giving she was helping out some brothers in, in incarcerated you know what i mean i guess putting money on their commissary or whatnot and there was this black dude one of the the alleged um suspects or whatever else like that that tried to imitate her clothing line but it flopped you know what i mean and it is said that he no doubt was one of the other ones that were very envious they, they had this hatred of her it reminded me of the other parable in Luke chapter 19 that we was touching on. You remember when so his citizens hated him? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, or you do something and I might try to do the same type of business you do. And you're prospering in that business. But I'm trying to like kind of bite your move and everything. And mine's flop. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to begin to hate you in that, in that fallen state. You begin to hate you, but you did me no wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might even have tried to maybe even help me in my business, you know? But because I was not faithful in what is another man's, 
Notice what it says. Who shall give you that which is your own? Note the language. It didn't say how you're going to get your own. Because a lot of people talk about, I'm going to get, I'm going to do this for myself. I don't have to. But, but notice, who shall give you that which is your own? Let me break this down, peeps, for a moment. This is like black people a couple of years ago. Well, not a couple of years ago. I'm going back to the 90s. I remember there was a lot of black businesses. Some were very good, very successful. They had good customer skills. I mean, let me emphasize customer skills. There's some of our so-called people that open a business because of black business and expect you to patronize because it's black. You know, like we say, buy black. No, no, I, I, I would say black businesses treat your black customers with courtesy, understand customer relation because they are the ones who give you what is your own. Because the customer, the patrons don't patronize you. You see what I'm saying? Where's your business? Yeah, it is your business. You you did have to sacrifice, so to speak, hopefully in the positive sense, you know, to get the money and to start the business. So And yes, that's difficult. But just because you did that, you can't expect. That's where a lot of black businesses flop. There was expectation, buy black, buy black. But one is selling people trash, you know, lower inferior quality product and service too. For real. That's the main thing. That's why we go back to Black Wall Street and back in the days of our ancestors. Their businesses were popping, right? All over the place. They probably had some failures, but overall, it was a more prosperous and a forward generation because they understood these basic biblical truths outside of its religious application. You know, because people look at it as religious. What does it mean in heaven? What does it mean in heaven? What are you talking about heaven, nigga? You're on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. You didn't get that? You didn't get the memo? <laughs> you wanna go to G you wanna go to the heaven. It says, No servant can serve two masters. This is the famous verse. I I'm I'm sure people heard this before, right? And, and and everybody who goes to church need to remember that with these churches with some of the things guys, right now we're talking about the big thing is about um who the Hebrew Israelites are and these kind of things here and we shouldn't be here 400 years and with pastors and preachers in black churches for all this time and we still have a debate about this thing. This thing should have been settled amongst the black people a long time ago. So when he's speaking about this next verse here, he's mm. speaking to the church then. Mm, mm. There's no debate. Thank you for mentioning that. There's no debate. It's a slaughter. We're talking about yeah. slaughter, bro. This is a slaughter here. Yeah. I'm, I'm because <laughs> and all these churches are tax exempt and if you're tax exempt that means you have to abide by rules and regulations of the exemptor mm. if you're a Christian in truth you have to abide by the rules and regulation of the Christ <laughs> yeah I saw both of them uh, but check this check this right here Look, I, I, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I see where the eyes are going with that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a whole inch in the 501c3. We got, we got to do something on that right there. Because I want to explain something. Because even some of our operations, we operate in that status, but not as a church, but as a business. You know, there's many political um, entities, you know, Jewish and otherwise. And they're, and they're Jews, right? But they have an entity where they can speak out on politics or whatever. You see, you know what I mean? Because they 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 don't they don't um, ask permission for their worship. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. See, see what happened is that when black churches did the 501c3 thing, there's a special church, um, um, uh, 501c3 category. I, I, if I can say, there's a certain category. So right now, if you say you want to incorporate a church and you go to the, your local um, state department in whatever state. And you say, yeah, I want to start a, a church. Once you say the word church, that's all. If you notice in I and I, L O J society, you know what I mean? You know, it it it, it doesn't. Yeah, we deal churchically, but we we are not um, identified as a church. Yes, because and we found an out because initially we did try to go as a church. This is more than twenty, almost thirty years ago, and they gave us the paperwork. And going through that paperwork. 
they were asking all this about your board of directors, your constitution, how you do this, how you do that, and you had to supply all of that. Now, once you do that, you handcuff yourself. So what we did, yeah. we we consulted with with the, one of the people up in the in the Department of State. And then we found out that we didn't have to do it like that. Like whatever we put there, if we put education, like on our main, you know, your main description, like yeah. education, they might send send you to the education department. If you if I put health thing, but we want we want we about health, we had to go to the health department. And if you say you're a church, they put you in a church category, and the church category prohibits you from speaking out about politics. Right, and that's since 1952, like after the 1950s. So the churches before that never fell under that because the whole IRS status, right, came in after the 1950s and everything. So then I found out by doing my research how some of the other organizations, like among some of these Jews, even the Zionists and the rest of them, they have organizations where in their in their meetings or their gatherings they're dealing with torah whatever 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 like a synagogue which is a jewish church but they did not incorporate their activity underneath the united states authority jurisdiction like that like like to limit themselves as that you know i'm just pointing it out that that's one of the things that that cramp and cripple and paralyze a lot of organizations you know, with that status. And, and here's the thing. Here's the biggest thing. How can some of these, um, they're against the law, Christians, you know, um, free from the law, Christian, these lawless. How can some of these lawless Christians operate properly under 501c3 laws and understand the laws of the land to do the almighty masses work? You know what I'm saying? When they don't even understand the laws of God that they talk about, that they're free from. Because mostly when they say they're free from the law because it's written in the Bible, you're a liar. You know why you're a liar? You know why you're a liar? Because those who wrote it in the Bible, like Paul and the rest of them, were Jews. And they were speaking about something that was in the context of that experience that lead to the Messiah, Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? A, a Gentile who was a Roman or a Greek who said he was a Christian, how could he say he is free from the law? What law is he free from? The Jewish law? He was never under the Jewish law. So, exactly. And when he's in Rome, he's going to abide by the Roman law. Now, like these Christians, they're free from God's law, right? But they are now regulated by Babylon law. <laughs> well, back then, the way the Romans operate back then, wherever they put their foot was Rome. So they, so they operate under Roman law everywhere they went. Exactly, and that's one thing that they did not they did not take no chat on. That's one thing they didn't take no chat on. In fact, the Romans love Greek culture. The the Romans, they, they imitated a lot of things from Greek culture. They gave things as Roman names, Latin names. But you know the one thing they did not borrow from Greek is law. They didn't borrow democracy. You notice that. They kept republic. They didn't borrow anything from law. That's one thing about that I say about the Gentiles. When, when, when we compare the Gentiles to Israel, since there's a big discussion about, you know, who be the, the, the Israelites and Jews and Hebrews. One thing about the Romans and the other nations, both in the past, in the biblical times of Israel and even in the modern times, they don't question their law, man. You get you get self-professed Hebrews and Israelites that be questioning your law. <laughs> Whether it's old covenant or new covenant, they're crazy, man. No wonder we can't get nothing going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, this obedient comes from not wanting to accept laws. And, and we're more concerned about imposing a lot of ain't right Israelites are more concerned about imposing Torah law on non Israelites than about us practicing and perfecting. The spirit of the law, the spirit and the life of the law of the Moshiach amongst I and I. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're more concerned about what if we go in the street, whether whether the nations recognize who we are. You, you see what I'm saying? And validate us. Or even the white Jews, the European Jews. Why do they have to validate us? Why don't we just be us? 
FUBU. But let's get into this verse right here. I had the verse on the screen for a moment. Brothers and sisters, I hope you got it. I'm going to go through it. Verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For either either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God, Ha Elohim, Hailehim, and mammon, and riches, treasure, money. Now, can, can, can we just chat right here for a moment? No servant can serve two masters. Get that, right? One, you, you know, hate. One love, you know what I mean? Can't, it, one despise, you know, can't do that. But the last part of the verse, the last part where it says, you cannot serve Elohim and mammon. Do you know what the solution of this is? We serve Elohim with our wealth. I'm going to prove it from the Israelite example. Jah gave them the land, right? Jah said he will bless them, their crops, their fruit, their, their you know, the, the animals will increase, the, the land will, will give a good crop, you know, the fruit of the womb, you have children, all this is going to increase, you know what I'm saying? But what are we to do regularly according to Torah law, right, at seasons and times? We're to put a, a tithe away, right, right, we're to, we're to give, you know, we're commanded into giving. You know, if we see our poor brother who doesn't have anything, right, and he lacks something, we have to fulfill his lack, not that's to borrow to him. Nobleman. That's the example the nobleman was showing. Ah, thank you. Boom. Full cipher. Full cipher. That's the example right there. And that's what the Torah teaches. That's what the Torah was teaching the Israelites to do. That's what it was basically teaching when it talked about tithing it speaks about this most of the tithes we store up with ourselves we don't give every week from our paycheck that's something that they developed in babylon under under, under roman christianity but you cannot serve elohim and mammon some people serve money you know that's 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 where that is at today people are serving money you know what i mean they're serving money in, in you know some strange way and they're not getting money they're serving money but money is like is like a slave master they're trying to serve money right and they're trying to serve god like with lip service but what the noble man as you just brought forward is proven even what the rich man in the parable here is proven the rich man knew that this unjust servant was unjust unrighteous but now he showed himself wisely you know like like at the last minute now you're doing what you know, if I gave you the pink slip no notice, you should have been doing already. So that means even if he cut the 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 one old a hundred measures of oil, right? And he says, write down fifty, cut it in half. Look at that, cut it in half. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of debt collection. I think the debt collectors nowadays learn from this. I think the people in the world learn more from this than than the saints do, and then the children of light, because that's what they do: with debt collection. You ever have a debt? And you didn't pay off that debt, and then sometime you get these stuff in the mail, and they they say that if you would pay half of it, <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we'll remove this debt off your credit, of your record, your credit. You know the credit adjustment and all those sort of things. That's what was going on here, but that's what he was not doing regularly. But the master. The rich man did not press charges against him, beat him up, throw him in jail or whatever else, so forth and so on. He commended him. He praised him, right? Because now he is serving his master to say like God, you know, because we're supposed to serve what it says in the New Testament. It says we're supposed to serve our employer, right, as we serve the Lord. A lot of people get confused about that one. I don't know if you came across that one before. Where it says, like, to serve our, like, bosses, you know, like we serve the Lord. The point of that is that we serve with integrity in the business. Because, no doubt, out of our mouth, we will say we are Christian. Or we will say we believe in God. Or we believe in the Bible. Right? So, therefore, if we're working, like, in a business or something, and we say we believe in God and the Bible, and yet we're doing an unrighteous business, an unrighteous service, bad business, you know, you know, we got bad manners and everything. That reflects poorly, right, on our Lord, on our God. You know what I'm saying? So, this is why 
and 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 it's not saying that the boss is God, right? But because we say we serve the true power, right? And we testify to this in our life, in our being, maybe with our mouth too. We should do a good job at that because what what, what did he say earlier about another man's? He said he who he who had not been faithful in that which is another man's. So if you say you're a Christian, by saying you're a Christian, you're naming the name of another or the title of another man of Yeshua, the Moshiach. You know what I'm saying? By saying that we are, so we're not faithful in that which belongs to another man's, right? Who shall give us that which is our own? So notice in the next verse, it says 14, the Pharisees also who were covetous. <laughs> now, now, now covetous. Covetous, uh, what's this? Philaguros. Philaguros is loving money, basically. D just to keep it simple, philaguros in the in the Greek is loving money. <laughs> because they were yeah, they were lovers of money. Now notice something: if you if you serve the true power in the teaching and in the in the in the sayings of Yeshua, you see, what I'm saying. You'll have your needs and even some beyond that, but you don't have to love money. Notice something that some rich people, some, I'm not saying all, some rich people or people who have really don't love money. They understand money. You know what I mean? The true relationship with money is what you can do with money, especially if you seek to help others or to like bless other people's lives with money. You know, that is... That is like loving the Almighty. That's loving like Elohim, right? You don't love the money, you use the money. You know what I mean? You don't, you serve Elohim, right? And you use the money to serve Elohim. That's the point of it. But the way that the, the preachers have, have distorted the meaning of it, right? They say, well, serve Elohim and, and, and God and just forget about money. God will provide. But then the scripture says, no, six days you shall work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the seventh day is your Sabbath. People say, keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. They talk every day about keeping the Sabbath, right? But what about the work? Notice the commandment is one. The commandment is one. Six days you shall work, and the seventh day is the Sabbath. Therefore, keep the Sabbath day set apart. So the reason for keeping the Sabbath day is it's a rest from the work. So the Pharisees who were covetous, they loved money, right? They heard all these things and they derided him. <laughs> you know, ekmukterizo, right? Ekmukterizo. They derided by turning up the nose. They sneered at him. They scoffed at him. You know, they were like, huh, huh. Hey, what he said, huh, huh. You know, and he said to them, what did he say to them? Y'all are they who justify yourselves before men. Wow, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of that going on on social media. I just got to say that <laughs> maybe it's from the way I see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to let a thing ride, you know, but Elohim knoweth your hearts for yes. that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of Elohim. You know what I mean? That which is highly esteemed among men you know like the law and the prophets were until john uh-oh the law and the prophets were until john since that time the kingdom of heaven is preached and every man presses into it and this is the context of it and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than one tittle of the lord to fail to fail you remember what i said earlier and when ye fail and when we fail to live up to the Torah requirements, you better make friends of people out in the world. If you're not living, if you're not living the Torah way, you better have some some exit, some exit strategy. You better have a backup for the backup, is what Yeshua is saying. You know what I mean? You know. And then he goes into some some likewise. So now now he changes up the not changing up, but he changes up the point of reference. You know, but it was these first verses. We can get into that part because he speaks about, um, uh, you know, he speaks about the divorce and then the rich man and Lazarus 
at the end of it. But it was this one here that really caught my attention from years ago is when he was speaking about, again, a parable about money. And he's talking to his disciples. Notice that. He said to the disciples, but the Pharisees were listening. <laughs> Babylon, now listen, you know, the Pharisees... Oh, yes. The Pharisees, well, well, they, bec they became Romans. Yo, I, this is on another relate, uh, related level. I found out that it was the Pharisees and some of the religious folks that brought the Romans more into the Yehudi, the black Jews business in the first century, you know, in the New Testament of the Bible. That was actually the Pharisees who had brought them brought them into, you know. <laughs> they, they were colluding with the Romans for position. Yeah. This, this is what was going on. Just like in them churches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, yeah, it was the Pharisees. It was the Pharisees in them. Um, yeah, after the time of the Maccabees. Like the Maccabees was a good moment, but uh, after the time of the Maccabees It's almost like we go back to roots reggae But then the music that comes in After that time You know what I'm saying yeah. It's not the same as the time of the roots It's only like the same thing with the Maccabees The Maccabees was an important time You know where they, where they Truly sincerely resisted and, and their hearts was cleaved to like Torah And to live in the righteous way Because we had to live righteous Amongst ourselves in order to be able to have that spiritual power, right, to overcome our enemies, you know, our outer enemies. You know what I mean? In other words, we couldn't be divided amongst ourselves, you know, and then stand up against a united, the united Greeks, you know what I'm saying? The Gracchoi or the united Romans, you know what I mean? Because you never see, you never see the divisions amongst the Romans. You know, the Romans had their divisions, you know what I mean? They had their differences. But when they came in to conquer, they didn't bring in those differences. You know what I'm saying? You know, they didn't talk about, you know, one, I want I want to bring back the Republic. Uh, 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 you know, I want to bring back the Marnock. I, 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 I'm, I'm all favor of the Caesars. You know, they had a whole, they had their own politics, but they didn't allow their politics to stop what their business was in preaching the Roman gospel. I'm saying the gospel of, of Rome. If you're under Rome, everything will be good. We'll let you worship your gods or whatever you want to do. As long as you pay taxes, you do tribute, you know, do what we want you to do. And we'll let you worship your gods. Because what they were saying basically is your gods are nothing. Yeah, you can worship your gods. Just be a good and true and faithful Roman citizen. Exactly. You know, pay your taxes, love the emperor, you know what I mean, the Caesar, and everything will be all right with you. You know what I mean? And basically, many of the Jewish, the Hebrew authorities coming into the New Testament time, they had already colluded and collaborated with them. That's why they were afraid of Yeshua, remember? They said that if we let Yeshua continue to do what he's doing, they're going to take away from us the temple and everything. You know, they're going to take away from us our, our business. They're going to shut us down. If you do that, they're going to take away your 501c3. <laughs> they're going to shut themselves down when the people find out the truth. And if you start preaching from the pulpit, you know, that that Yeshua, you know, is a Negro, you know, as they used to call uh, our people. So he's one of us. If God was one of us. You know, even sitting on the bus, one of us, you know what I'm saying? They're going to shut us down. You know what I mean? If, if, if Yeshua keeps it up, you know what I'm saying? Because Yeshua wasn't in on that <laughs> agreement <laughs> that they made. That's why when they try to kill him, you know this? When they try to kill him, they had to go get permission. Can you imagine that? <laughs> they had to go was get permission. They under their own law. They was under Roman law. The funniest part in, in the whole crucifixion scene, and I'm not saying that the crucifixion was funny in no wise. It was sad what we did, you know, to the righteous one of our own. But the funny part was when they went to Pontius Pilate. Remember, and they was talking about how he break the Sabbath. He don't keep the Sabbath the way they want him to keep the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? And what, yeah. and what, did, he, and what did Pilate say? Am I a Jew? <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's like telling this Jewish stuff, you know what I mean? That has nothing to do with, you know, that has nothing to do with them. And think about it in the same sense. 
it's like what some of our brothers be doing today. We be talking to these Gentiles, the Babylonians, even some of the other Jews, our business, like we need validation. Like we need to get permission to do something from them. You know what I'm saying? We're so-called in this America and we have so-called freedom of speech or whatever. So they shut us down. They, if that, that happens, that happens, man. You know what I mean? You know, it's almost like it's wild. Like still in a mental slavery thing, you know, as my Bob say, alleviate yourself from mental slavery because none but ourselves can free our minds. Boom. Free our minds. You know, on, on a Gnostic level, Hermes Trismegistus. I just want to point that out. I was yes. get, I was getting into some of that again. I, I used to read that and study that. It's some simple points of wisdom that, if you can receive it, it 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 it, it reflects the scripture. You know what I mean? It, it it kind of it kind of can clear your head on the role of God, the true God, highlight Him in the mind. You know what I mean? You know the the life and the soul. You know, and the mind and God, you know, like God being the mind and, you know, free your mind. You know what I mean? Free that, free, free that, that God power in you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, that God power. I'm not just speaking spiritual things. I'm speaking for our health, our mental health, our psychological health, you know, our financial health as well. You know, because financial health, that's why I pointed out that verse. I've been young and now I'm old. Right, you know, never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You know what I'm saying? Nor his seed begging bread. You know, and just as our ancestors who came up from the plantation came up from chattel slavery, many of them testified to our great great grandparents, our great grandparents, our grandparents, our parents, that there was a certain spiritual ethic because of what we in our mind you know what we held to be true and what we lived out that caused us even to get through the most difficult times and when you compare today to them days you know what i'm saying come on now come on now <laughs> it's a whole it, it's it, it's, a, it's a whole different thing today you know what i mean because nowadays today there are so many social benefits in society you know what i mean you know like before charity or like welfare or helping others out in fearing well which was the welfare you know what i mean helping them out that was based on churches you know that one time it was the churches that actually did the so-called charity or the righteous giving in the community churches or like synagogues you know some real torah observant yehudi you understand you know it, it, it didn't come from the government i don't know if people know that it's not the government's responsibility to do what it's been doing over the last 50, 60 years. They basically did that at the time of Johnson to keep Israel compromised in the spiritual Sodom and Egypt. That's why they did that. It's not the government's role to do that. I just, I just have to emphasize that because people get the idea that's the government's role, you know, to give charity. No, it's the government's role to make sure that a fair set of law for all the citizens to protect one's you know rights you know what i mean to exercise their citizen rights in society it's not there to give people handouts it's not there for that you know what i mean it's, it's absolutely not there for that this, but what's happened is because the government took that over back from the 60s and 70s in the 70s in in johnson's great society once they took that back and they started to give, you know, this is what broke down families. Think about it for a moment. A lot of families were broken down. Because before when we, in a sense, I have to say it like this, when we had to depend on ourselves, it was better. It's only like the more, like it says about the Israelites in Egypt, the more they were persecuted, the more they were like blessed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, because the more that they persecuted our ancestors, the more we did for one another and, and, and a lot of those little little um divisions, right, were 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 solved, were resolved. You know what I'm saying? 
You know, and, and even though we may not have liked each other, you know what I'm saying, because we, in a sense, had to work together and there was an ethos in the black community with, with the Bible and the, the so-called Christian faith that made it real to them. If you understand what I'm saying, it made it real to them beyond the white Jesus and all of that. But once we were integrated into the society, we became just like them. Don't you get it? That's what yeah. it talks about living in the image of the beast. That, that, that black people and other peoples, but mainly the lost sheep, Beta Israel has been living in the image of the beast. And a lot of these teachers, a lot of these scholars, a lot of even some of the Israelite ones and ones who be preaching some real and true messages often don't really zoom in on that connection. They like to throw out like Christianity, right? But whose Christianity are we talking about? You're talking about it from the way with the black icons you're talking about it from back in the days right when we know our people were involved and when our people were able to manifest the truth of the bible or after our religious leaders compromise just like the pharisees and the sadducees they did the very same thing yeah they compromised the, with the politics they they they, they saw they're doing still, they're, they're still doing it that's the connection that, that give thanks that's the connection we want the people to to be able to recognize right there and that's what has what, what did christ say and ye make the word of 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 god of elohim of none effect that's why people say what good is the bible you know what i mean what good is this religious jesus thing believing in god and the bible that's why you have a lot of people a lot of the youths and a lot of our people talking a, a lot of what sounds like crazy talk because the people who have come in Jesus' name and said they are Christian, they are Christ, Christian, right? They have been lawless to the teaching. They have not manifested those teachings. They have failed, just as the word says. They have failed to manifest it. But we can look in history, even our ancestors' history, and we can see when those principles were applied. And overall, it was better for the community for the common unity of black people. And we may not have known it because we was doing it, you know, out of survival. But the system, Babylon, the devil, Hasatan understood it. Remember, it talked about the serpent was the most cunning, was the most subtle, was the subtle of all the beasts. <laughs> He's a subtle beast. The serpent understood psychology, right? And, and the devil in this system, the Satan in this Babylon system understood that while black people Right, were being persecuted, right? As good Christians would be, as as the saints would be, you know what I'm saying? You know, be persecuted as the Israelites would be, as the once lost now found would be. That the more they persecute us, the stronger we got. So the only option was integration. Remember, the civil rights movement never started out as an integrationist movement. It didn't start out like that. It said that we're citizens here, we're people, we need to have our rights as human beings respected under these same laws. Since the law doesn't say specifically no black people, not for black people, it was basically, you could say, so to speak, for our rights, right, to be respected and to be observed. Like, you know, like there was a separate but equal. But even though we were separate, we were not equal. In that sense, they would give monies that we pay from taxes and black people was paying taxes back then. You know, what I mean, we were as long as we was involved in this society, we were part of building up the society, it, whether it was under the whip or whether it was under the free man and the free woman. You see what I'm saying? But um, yeah, yeah. So 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 basically, bro, um, you know, I don't want to go on too long on this right here, but this is a this is a good reason, man that the eye brought forward. I know we went a little way from the slave part, the slavers, but I hope that we have some slot. You know, what, 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 what do they say, manslaughter? You read the word as manslaughter. Somebody else could read the word as man's laughter. <laughs> the same word, break, break down the word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I have I have Yeshua on the screen right here. It's the Ethiopian for people watching the, the video. I'm going to seal up on this right here for a moment. Maybe catch up on something else, but another just vibes. And But right here, you see Yeshua 
at the Last Supper. It's, it's one of the, um, the Ethiopian icons. I think this is uh, the artist from the King of Kings time, the great artist. And it's a beautiful Last Supper picture. I don't know if you've seen it. I'll try to get it off of this phone and, excuse me, share it with the eye. You know, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting, <laughs> it's an interesting Last Supper, you know, a Ethiopian Hebrew Last Supper <laughs> Seder, you know, and even the table, it has it has that blue and that white and the blue stripes, you know, like the Ethiopian um, um, scarves and netlas and shamas, yeah, <laughs> it got that effect, and Yeshua is wearing like how his mantle has that 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 that, sh that, that sash across the breast like yeah. in revelation yeah yeshua is at the center right there wearing the red sash you know across his chest but i definitely don't want to send this one to the eye because maybe we'll pick up on this but any seal up words my brother um on this one right here i know there's a few more just vibes to vibes <laughs> i want to say when we um going through scripture and breaking down scripture, right? It's always good to keep going back over and going back over and going back over, right? Because sometimes you think you, you know, you'll get something or get a certain scripture, right? And then you go back over that scripture or you, you see a verse somewhere and that verse by itself stunts you and then you go through, back through and then you realize that you didn't have the understanding you thought you had about certain things until you really get a chance to reason or dig down into it, you know, so be patient with self and, you know, knowledge is there for us, the wisdom is there, they say what was hidden from the wise and prudent to be revealed to be able and suffering, you know, we are in the time of the quickening where knowledge is being revealed to ones and one in an instantaneous time, you know, so just have to decipher between the things them that are good to eat. <laughs> yes, yes. And the things them that are not, you know, so Try to get a full meal, you know? Aye, aye. Between the kosher and the not so kosher. <laughs> and yes, the not kosher. Yes, I. Yes, I. Rastafari. Yes, I. Give thanks for the reason, man, here. And no doubt we may return to the subject matter because it's a living word. You know what I mean? It's a living word. We're not talking about words. We're not talking about words. <laughs> We're talking about the living word. You know what I mean? It's a living word. So the reason, man, definitely definitely that, that's the example that the master shows us you know like when he asks things like what thinkest thou you know what i'm saying he, he asks us what thinkest thou so he wants us to think on these things you know what i mean and yes, to sir. reason on these things and to come to some sort of a you know a understanding and a and a understanding so we can have that full standing for the overstanding and the overcoming yes my brother and also you know hear love to to junior you know to cuz as well on that verse I, I hope and pray that they deliberate and can understand that yeah it, it, it's right and accurate you know what i mean you know he laid down his life in that sense you know what i'm saying but in the fullness of times you know the hatred you know the hatred has to be slain you know that enmity you know and the enemies have to be slain and if you want to take it on a metaphysical and a spiritual level, we have to slay, you know, the enemies in ourselves first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got to slay, like, if we're feeling that, that hate within ourselves to our brother or our sister, we got to slay that. We have to dead on that. Like, the Bible even talks about that whole slaying. Oh, Chan, you know, we might have to reboot on this one here. I'm just looking at the time here. I know one sometimes like the full of full video. But there's those verses in the Bible where it says like to mortify our fleshy members. It uses the term mortify. Mortify like there's the there's the um the, the morgue. We say the morgue or like the mortician. You know, that's basically the one who basically deals with the dead. But the sense of mortify as we have it in the New Testament sense means to kill it, to dead on it. It's like when we say amongst ourselves, like, dead on that. Yo, 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 dead on that, man. Dead that, man. You know what I mean? Like you talking about the next brother or you or you and next brother is arguing. And the rest of us will say, yo, 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 dead that, dead that. You know, we basically say, kill that. You know, yeah, slay uh -huh. that. Yeah, kill that. Kill that. Kill that noise. Slay that. Let's, you know what I mean? <laughs> Make that dead. Make it inactive. <laughs> so we have to 
you know, slay those enemies. You know, those those thoughts. They, they used to be a prayer. I heard some faithful say, they say, oh, Lord, if I can remember, it's, oh, Lord, slay every way or remove every way in me that's not like you. You know what I mean? Like, I, like remove from I and I every way. So that's also our responsibility. You know what I mean? That he gives I and I. Because once we overcome in the internal, the internal battle, you know, the external is like walking on water. <laughs> For real, for real. You know what I mean? For real, for real. You know what I mean? For real, for real. Man is more than what the devil wanna wanna make you believe. He 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 he, he is or isn't. <laughs> yes, I Rastafari. I seal up right here. Just vibes and give thanks, brothers and sisters. Yes, I stay tuned. Stay aye. tuned. I, I. Rastafari.